I wish to remind honorable members that when the, last, the House last rose, we were on bills, and I think I did at that time recognize the mic of the honorable member for Viewport North. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I wish at this point to, to thank God and also continue to thank the people of Viewport North for their support and also thanks to my colleagues. Allow me, Madam Speaker, a very short time, some latitude to express the sadness that we continue to feel for the people of Sufre and also the people who use the Sufre Hospital, Madam Speaker. It is a very important and fundamental, it's a time when we, when all of us, our hearts must go out to the patients, the staff, and the residents of Sufre. We continue to encourage all St. Lucians, Madam Speaker, to pull together and to continue to encourage the, the government to do the best that it can at this time with resources to ensure that the people of Sufre get back their facility as soon as is practicable. It's very important, Madam Speaker, especially with what is happening with the St. Jude Hospital and others. I would have thought that the Prime Minister would take the opportunity this morning to speak about the Sufre fire, but the Sufre Hospital fire, but I guess Grindberg is more important to him. Yeah. Madam Speaker, this bill for consideration, the Airport Development Bill of 2017, is for the development of proposed airport facilities. Madam Speaker, I might assume that my first statements were not heard. I'm just hearing the, the mic, the system now. I just want to be sure. It has only just come on. Honorable member, I'm so informed that your mic, um, your, it was recorded. I'm receiving a feedback. I think it became louder, but not that it was not recorded. Okay, please proceed. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. The bill for consideration is the Airport Development Bill of 2017. And Madam Speaker, as indicated before by my colleague from Castries South, member for Castries South, this bill speaks to the development of airport facilities. Madam Speaker, we agree that airport development is important for economic growth. And our actions as a when we were in government indicated that we were very serious about the development of the Hiwanura International Airport. A little later on, Madam Speaker, I will speak to the issue of the 2015 Hiwanura International Act, Airport Development Act, which will be repealed as soon as this bill becomes an act. And it's very interesting, Madam Speaker, that the 2015 Act speaks or refers specifically to the Hiwanora International Airport, but this one speaks to just airport development. And later on, when we go through the clauses, I will explain, Madam Speaker, why I am confused 
and why I cannot trust what this government presents, because there is always innuendo and hidden meaning. Because in this bill, when we look at some of the clauses, it refers to airport facilities, not airport. So we'll come to that. Madam Speaker, nous toujours dit que qui va nous airport important, avec nous quoi qui est important pour développer airport. Mais nous avons gouvernement, nous avons un travail pour développer les portes. Ce n'est pas nous seulement, mais tout le monde est d'accord qui a un bagage pour faire. Mais la différence, c'est que est si vous avez fait un bagage, n'importe quelle manière, parce qu'il vous a fait. Et c'est notre disagreement, Madame Speaker. Ne le pas dit que notre côté ne veut pas développer le Hiwanora International Airport. Parce que nous avons well advanced in our process of developing the Hiwanora International Airport. Madam Speaker, Section 3 relates to charges, extra charges, taxes on tickets that will be purchased, and extra charges on tickets to the tune of $94.85 cents EC more for St. Lucians. Section 3 relates to an increase in the price, an increase in the ticket price as a result of the charges that will be placed because of this act. Section 11, ça veut dire, depuis 1er janvier l'autre l'année, c'est l'issien qui a gagné un ticket qui a gagné plus pour ces tickets. Section 11 relates to payment of a development charge to an authority. Section 12, Madam Speaker, speaks to debt servicing. And since we are talking about debt, it points to the government's intention to use debt financing to develop airports or airport facility projects, of airport improvement projects, plural in St. Lucia. So, Madam Speaker, I said, where the bill of the government is going, it is a loan to the point. The way you have the bill, it is going to be that the government is going to be a loan to the airport of Yuanora in St. Lucia. Madam Speaker, Section 13, the Airport Development Fund. The coming into force of this act, the government has indicated that this act, Madam Speaker, will come into force on January 1st, 2018, 25 days from now. So, 25 jours après aujourd'hui, la gagne en loi 9, gouvernement dit qui a changé de manière nous a développé et porté en aura. La gagne en loi 9 qui a fait que nous payer plus en l'étiquet pour pour travel. Et ça, c'est en 25 jours. 25 days from now. So, Madam Speaker, if I am allowed to follow from where the member for Castries South left, this means that in 25 days, without any declarations on the debt by the Air and Seaports Authority, that passengers will be charged an additional $94.85. 25 days from now. Those going to Barbados, to Trinidad and Tobago, Sakikale, Dominic, Antigua, etc. How then does the government explain? or unless the government intends, Madam Speaker, within 25 days to give to the people of St. Lucia the explanations and different explanations that the Prime Minister so wants for many different things. In 25 days. So will the government, is the government saying, Madam Speaker, that this act will come into force 
before the explanations are given about debt financing and all of that? Ça c'est question moi comme dire. Does it mean that the ANC Ports Authority is in negotiations? Et ça veut dire ANC Ports Authority a ka zaka ache loan na ou bien est ça mean gouvernement zani loan na? Yo zani, yo za aller parler avec un monde ou bien pays ou bien organisation pour bailler l'argent pour mettre en dette à leur pays cette ici pour yo faire effort là. Madam Speaker, it is very important for those questions to be answered. Section 12. Section 12 relates to debt, Madam Speaker. It relates to the development charge for airport projects. It relates to the lockbox account. And I reiterate, Madam Speaker, I will say encore. Section 12, a bill that can talk about airport projects. Projects. If I got the UNO International Airport, the government can talk about it today. It's facilitated, differentiated. So, I don't know if it's an airport, or an airport, or two airports. Subsection 7, under Section 12, Madam Speaker. The authority to ensure that the revenue is not less than sufficient. Madam Speaker, it is being said, and the Prime Minister can refute it, that this airport will cost approximately 406 million EC dollars. EC dollars. 406 million EC dollars. Is this true? Est-ce que vous voyez que pour vie et bâtir le gouvernement a prêté 406 millions ici dollars? Est-ce que vous This means, Madam Speaker, if this is true, this government is asking the Parliament to add to the debt stock of St. Lucia. $406 million to redevelop airport projects in St. Lucia. Has the government taken a decision, Madam Speaker, to develop the George F. L. Charles Airport? Is there an airport development section to DSH that will be paid for through this act? And we've all seen the renderings, Madam Speaker. There are no explanations to that. I say, Madam Speaker, that earlier I said that when the Prime Minister comes to this House, or when he makes statements, public statements and commitments about projects in St. Lucia, there is clear evidence, Madam Speaker, that what he says, whether it's in the house or outside of the house, does not match the reality. It doesn't, Madam Speaker. And I believe that this, this bill, with the proposals in there, will not match the reality, Madam Speaker. And there are several of them. And one of them happened just this morning, Madam Speaker. And I'm relating to the bill, I'm relating to the proposals that are in the bill, and why I don't believe those will match the reality. This is not a government, Madam Speaker, that speaks and acts in the way that it speaks, Madam Speaker. And they do it boldface, they are brazen, they are arrogant about the way they do it. And they do it in the faces of people who are affected, Madam Speaker. I'll give you an example. This morning, I'm very pleased that the Council of Persons for Differently Abled People came to the House. Very nice. And we welcomed them, and we did what was necessary as parliamentarians. But that's the kind of hypocrisy that we have, Madam Speaker. Here is a Prime Minister of a country 
who speaks glowingly about having parties with children, and who speaks to the very people right in their faces, and you have Mr. Avril on television day in, day out complaining about assistance from the government. <coughs> The, the School of the Blind Welfare Association. Very, very simple example. Right there in the faces. Madam Speaker, the pronouncements that are in this bill will not match the reality. Because it is the habit of this government, Madam Speaker, to do those things. And there are many other examples. There are many other examples. This morning, the Prime Minister asked about those who were there to come and come and clarify and come and say things, present documents and all of that. Up to now, this government cannot say which is the correct DSH agreement, up to now. When we try to present it in the House, they try to block us, Madam Speaker. When the member for Castle South brings a document, they try to block us again. We can't talk. That is the history, Madam Speaker. So the very words of the Prime Minister this morning, that the nation remains in the dark on this matter, and I quote what he spoke of. The nation still remains in the dark on the DSH matter. Weapon, sir. Madam Speaker, I am concerned about this bill because it speaks to airports. It speaks to airport facilities. And in the renderings that were presented by the Prime Minister, there are clearly facilities around Sandy Beach in the renderings in Beaufort that are extremely close to the airport. So if we are speaking about development of airports, I need to ask whether the pronouncements of the Prime Minister on the DSH deal and what we saw close to the Iwanora airport, how does his airport, his plan to redevelop Iwanora affect this? Kiman yes, a drawing on the work to say sky rise building on the sandy beach. Pwe Hiwanora Airport. Kiman yeah, sa gouvernement vle fe ka affecte sa. Again, the people of St. Lucia are in the dark. No fen we, ek premier ministre ka madi a le eklezisma. No fen we toujou. Madam Speaker, This is the same Prime Minister, you know, who said later this year, how many days we have left in the year, that phases one of his DSH project would have been employing 500 to 800 people, three to four jobs for each thoroughbred. And today is the, the 5th of December. So how can we, how can we, Madam Speaker, believe that, that, that the, these words are, these things mean anything? Madam Speaker, we await the announcement of confirmation for the financing of Iwanora International Airport. We await. In 25 days, it will be the 1st of January. There is so much more. Claiming we made 680 on gas now, you know. The fishermen are now paying 13,500 a year. The farmers, 6,000 more a year in taxes. And the family with a small car paying over, over 4,000. Calculate it. So here we are, Madam Speaker. The government that complained about debt, debt, debt. The Labour Party is putting this country in debt, and debt will choke us and cripple us. Mem Gouvernement, Madam Speaker, over 400 million in debt to finance the airport. You guys put it in the It means that if you divide it by the population of St. Lucia, every individual immediately has $2,247 of debt added to the personal debt. 178,015 people in St. Lucia. That is the additional debt. Every child, everyone who was counted in the last census. Like you can talk about debt. When we had an option, Madam Speaker, that would not have placed St. Lucia in that debt. <laughs> 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 
Madam Speaker, could we have developed the airport and avoided the debt? Could we have done so? And while they continue to suck their teeth, bad manners as usual, <laughs> Madam Speaker, while they continue to suck their teeth when people speak, arrogance as usual, we will continue to say that we could have developed the airport using the methodology that the IFC recommended. But no, they choose to go the other way. You are the government. You know better than everybody else. But we are going to come to that, Madam Speaker. Section 12, Madam Speaker, relates to the authority ensuring that funds are sufficient to service the debt. So, in your section, Bilaki Gadiki, authority aki okay set up, Madam Speaker. Ni pou fè bagay pou asiwe ki. Ni pou fè bagay pou asiwe ki. La kay ni asi l'argent pou paye debt la. The questions are, it looks like everything is within your control, Madam Speaker. It looks like arrivals, tourism arrivals. It looks like, you know, external factors, external shocks in international markets. All of those things are within your control, it looks like. And is there a mechanism, Madam Speaker, to generate revenue for debt payments if we have a major problem? I don't know where the government will address this. Where? Isn't there a contingent liability on the state? So when I speak about 400 million in debt and they suck their teeth and they shake their head, isn't this a contingent liability on the state, Madam Speaker? Isn't it? I know I don't understand anything about finance. You know a lot about finance. You should. I thank you for that. I don't understand anything about finance. All I know is how to be honest. That's what I know. I don't understand finance. Thank you for that. You understand finance. I'm happy you said that today. Money, you understand money. Isn't there a contingent liability on the state, Madam Speaker? Si se muna pasa pe debt la. Es pe ya pa kai ni pou pe yi. Ek me sa vidi, ma kwenye about finance. Man la, jan, mwe pov, mwe whatever. Ma kwenye about finance. Mwe kontan ma kwenye about finance. Mwe onet, an onet moun sot view fort nof. Ti mouto ka mwe, ti bay, ma kwenye about finance. But I'm in the parliament here to represent the people of you, Fort North, and I will not stop talking about finance because you think I don't understand anything about finance. You hadi. Madam Speaker, the question in all of this is why? And you, 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 you can smell the arrogance, you know, Madam Speaker. Who am I, this little boy from you, Fort North, to know anything about finance? Yes. You are a guru on finance. What would be sad tell me, eh? Just like you want to make us cry. Madam Speaker, the question in all of this is, why does this government, with the member for Castries Southeast and the Prime Minister who are ministers, who are close to the developments in the Hiwanora Redevelopment Project between 2008 and 2011, why would they go back that route? Why? Why? And I heard earlier, Madam Speaker, pour que ça, yo même qui t'es involvé, yo même qui t'es là, pour que ça, yo vie en bagay ça là. By qui laisse, avec pour qui laisse, and why? And earlier today, Madam Speaker, I heard a member, the member for Castries North said, we can do it ourselves. And they all clapped, oh, we can do it ourselves. I guess he was missing the other part. We can do it ourselves for ourselves. We can do it ourselves. It looks like it's the 300 and 400 million dollar projects. We can do it by ourselves, so we're keeping it. Let me give you some small examples of, of projects that we could do by ourselves, and we're running away from it. They're not even half a million dollars. The Foisson Center, 
Big guru, Minister for Agriculture. Huh? I scared of him? <laughs> Ask him to speak before me in the parliament. That has never happened. He'll never do that. That's the challenge. <coughs> Madam Speaker, it is the big projects. The $300 million project that we can do by ourselves. What about the Fouasson Center? Working with the Rural Women's Network? Huh? It's not making profit. So, dump that. We can't do that by ourselves. What about marketing board? We can't do that by ourselves. It doesn't have $300 million. What about the fisheries thing? There are problems there, yes. But no, we cannot do that by ourselves. Radio St. Lucia, problems. Dump it. Nous pas ça fait ça pas connu. Mais c'est gros l'argent. $300 million. Nous ça fait. Oh, ça, nous ça fait pas connu. Madam Speaker, I'm just explaining the inconsistencies. Because they know about finance. And they can do it by themselves. The 300 and $400 million ones. The 300 and $400 million ones. They can do it by themselves. All doors can be open. There's nothing that I said that I don't have all documents. Trust me. Every single one of it. Madam Speaker, having had all the experiences of the Hiwonora Airport project and the Council of Slasper, why would the government place a debt of 400 billion on the people of St. Lucia? Why? Why abort a process and pay a fine? Pukisa. Why? I say to you, Madam Speaker, that the very countries members of this government go, go to in the Caribbean to get advice and to see what they do. Those countries use these same methods by the IFC. Why is it that this government is not adopting this one? Why? Why? And, and those questions come against the backdrop and the background of all of the, the, hidden, the hidden agreements the DSH, that nobody can know if this one is authentic or this one is not authentic. The demolition or not demolition of hospital. All kinds of things hidden. Whether they are going to repurpose or not repurpose. So they also demolish plans for PVP for Hiwanura. They demolish you for the administrative center, demolish plans for Supra Square, Demolish St. Jude, they want to demolish. Now they say it's not demolished. But they ain't demolishing the Diamond Mall at all. They're not demolishing this one. They ain't looking for a PPP for the Diamond Mall at all. 30 something million dollars. Madam Speaker. And what are the compelling reasons for, for stopping the process? The employment would have been created, the airport would have been built. And again, Madam Speaker, our debate with the government is on the methodology. We both agree that the airport must be built. I have said so before. My colleagues have said so. <coughs> but there would have been international advice and oversight. Now, that's the, that's the difference. There would have been international advice and international financial oversight. We would be following international trends and regional trends. But this one, we can do by ourselves. Of course we can do it by ourselves. I put it to you, Madam Speaker, that there can be no extraordinary reason for the government to have changed the, the process. They should tell us. They should tell us why. If they speak of employment, well, I heard the member for Ancillary Canaries talking about employment, that employment has been reduced to 16.4%. He, he forgot to say that they continue to use the STEP program to employ people. They forgot about the STEP program. 
But you should also say that. You should say that. You should say that. Where are the toilets for the ladies in the STEP program? Go to the toilet, Lamba. You say, Madam. He spoke about employment. The member for Ansari can really spoke about employment. And stimulus and all that. They spoke so glowingly about STEP is a waste of time. And, they, you know, ladies are bending by the road and all kinds of things. There are no toilets. But you cannot find answers for the employment in this country. You go, you go to STEP. And we are not decrying step, Madam Speaker. We use step. And you now realize that what you said about step was not true at all. So, Madam Speaker, we continue to ask the questions to the government. Why the change? Why? Do we do things simply because we can do it? Is it simply because we can do it, we choose to do it ourselves? Because we know we can do it, Madam Speaker? Do we do the things knowing well that the same process, the same process was followed with some of the same actors and we received advice as a government and there are lots of pending things in documents that nobody wants us to talk about. And we have the same actors shouting in the parliament the same things to go back and do the same things that we are advised not to do. And we're doing it because we can. <coughs> well, Madam Speaker, in the Prime Minister's statement when he addressed the House during the budget, he said that the Iwanora International Airport will be within the general development of Beaufort Town, which he called in his speech a ghost town. Always insulting us. He called in his speech a ghost town. How does that relate to the town of Beaufort, as he said before? So they try to break you down. They call you a ghost town. And then he goes back to say we are a ghetto. How does this airport development, how does it relate to the town of Beaufort in relation to what is in the bill? Now, Madam Speaker, I really want the government to answer the, this question. Are we developing airports? Or are we developing the Hiwanora International Airport? Are we developing airports? Or are we developing the Hiwanora International Airport? The bill speaks to airports. You're building another one? We just want to know. We just want to know. So, Madam Speaker, we know also that there are obvious criticisms, especially by Bretton Woods and others. There are criticisms of the IFC. There are criticisms of the IFC. But what we want the government to do, we want the government to explain to the people of St. Lucia why the process was changed. Why was the process changed? And we are not confident, Madam Speaker, with the same players that so many international people and agencies are asking questions about. We are not confident that these same players will give us a different result. I am very, very confident now, having heard the statement that this one we can do by ourselves, and seeing what they have done with the marketing board, Radio St. Lucia, and all these agencies that they could have done something about, I'm not confident, Madam Speaker, that this project is being done simply, simply because we can do it ourselves. I'm not confident of that. I believe, Madam Speaker, that there are other reasons. And as a parliament, we have a responsibility to the people of St. Lucia, just as the Prime Minister keep asking for answers for the government to provide the answers. 
And as I take my seat, Madam Speaker, I wish to say that none of those things faze me. None of them. The troops, the thinking, um, I, I, I under, I, if it's now I understand finance, opening of doors, none of them faze me. We are here to do the people's work, and we are going to ask the questions on behalf of the people. They are hiding things. DSH, the arrogant, want to make us cry. Dolphin Park. There are so many examples, victimizing the National Trust and so many others in this country. And they want to come here and talk about if you know anything about finance <coughs> and troops and so on. That, that is all they can do to respond, Madam Speaker. They cannot respond to the facts and the questions that we are asking them. So they'll go all around, open door, and talk about this and that and all kinds of things. But I say to you, Madam Speaker, we'll continue to ask the questions and we'll continue to press in all quarters, every single quarter, for them to provide those answers. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Honorable Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for tourism information and broadcasting. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I sat here amused as I listened to the, the prophets of political heresy. I know that you're a praying woman, Madam Speaker, and I know that uh, you will appreciate that the good book did talk about false prophets. <laughs> And prophets of doom and gloom, Madam Speaker, in moments and eras of opportunity and hope for our country. And so, Madam Speaker, I rise today very proudly to give support unwaveringly to this bill. Madam Speaker, I do so because I see, Madam Speaker, the opportunity in this airport. And I feel the plight, Madam Speaker, of all the workers and all the people who are associated with airlines. When you go to the Uranor International Airport on a weekend, in the peak periods, Madam Speaker, you will see the cumbersome nature. You will see, Madam Speaker, the confusion. You will see, Madam Speaker, a facility that is overutilized. And so, Madam Speaker, as we have outlived the capacity of the existing Uranora International Airport during the peak periods, it stymies our potential, Madam Speaker, to expand the airlift capacity of this country, to grow the tourism industry, grow the uh, GDP of the country, create more jobs and prosperity and opportunity for small businesses. Madam Speaker, Without their favorite program, the DSH project, St. Lucia is poised to explode with room expansion. And Madam Speaker, if we will successfully implement these projects, if we will, Madam Speaker, successfully accommodate the expansion of the room stock, which we are expecting, then Madam Speaker, we must plan for the future. And we see, Madam Speaker, that the expansion begins as immediately as December 15, with the reopening of 115 rooms at the Harbor Club Hotel, soon to be a Hilton branded property. Madam Speaker, earlier we announced that the hotel on the Raidway Beach, known as the Rex Resort, are planning to expand the beachfront facility with a 350 additional rooms with two exciting brands, the Hilton and the Curio. Madam Speaker, in the constituency of Choiseul, there is 
an additional 250 rooms being Madam planned Speaker. for a spanking Fremont Hotel. Madam, Madam Speaker, we have just had Madam an Speaker, announcement. Madam Speaker, on a point of order, this morning you so guided me that we should only refer to the specific clauses of the bill and nothing tangential or anything associated. I trust that the same guidance will be given. And so, Madam Speaker, as I continue to establish why this project is so necessary and why this bill is so important, Madam Speaker, I want to continue to reiterate the need for us to plan for the future. And in the constituency of Chazelle, there will be a five-star Fairmont Hotel. And Madam Speaker, the developers are very close to breaking ground, and we expect construction to start in the new year where they will build 250 rooms. And I know that my colleague parliamentarian from that constituency can't wait for this to happen. Madam Speaker, we had seen last month during the World Travel Awards that AM Resorts, powered by the Apple Leisure Group out of Chicago, has announced to the world that they plan to build 500 new rooms in St. Lucia at Canals Bay on the east coast of the country, Madam Speaker. The two brands that they will use, Madam Speaker, will be Dreams and Secrets, brands that are well known and well established across the travel community. And so, Madam Speaker, as we prepare for all of this and these uh, expansion in the room stock, we must, Madam Speaker, plan for the future. On the Pigeon Island Causeway, we see that there are more opportunities for jobs, more opportunities, Madam Speaker, for St. Lucia to expand its tourism growth. When the Sandals Resort chain is going to start a six-star resort uh, in the Le Souza brand, which began in Grenada, and that, Madam Speaker, will be a project comprising of 400 rooms. Madam Speaker, the government of St. Lucia is also in advanced negotiation with Cabot Lodges out of Canada, Madam Speaker, for 85 rooms and 250 villas. A total, Madam Speaker, in the development of 335 new keys, Madam Speaker, in the former raffle site at Capus Bay. Madam Speaker, Hotel Chocola, which has done a phenomenal job in helping to promote St. Lucia as one of the leading super brands in the United Kingdom, has announced 67 villas, Madam Speaker, in their expansion. Now, that's a total of 1,797 new rooms pending to come on screen, almost 2,000, or a 50% increase in the room stock. Tell me, how come we do not need to have in your international airport. Why is not this project urgent? Madam Speaker, I feel so sorry for the citizens of this country as they try to commute through Castries. When we see several cruise ships coming through the port Castries and the type of congestion and the type of clogging that is caused and the type of inconvenience, Madam Speaker. But you know why that is so? That is so because we have allowed tongue planning to go awry in our country. And Madam Speaker, as the country was expanding in cruise numbers, no one did anything about making sure that the traffic arrangements were adequately addressed. We cannot afford the same mistake with the airport development. We must plan for the future, Madam Speaker. That's what we're doing. And so, Madam Speaker, permit me 
to also speak to the people of St. Lucia, to tell them about the amount of jobs that will be created once these impending projects are implemented. Madam Speaker, the direct job impact would be 3,594. The indirect job impact is estimated, Madam Speaker, to be a 2,695, or a total of 6,289 new jobs, Madam Speaker, once all of these projects are implemented. Madam Speaker, we must give investments in this country a chance. We must say to the world that we are serious about tourism development. We cannot allow smaller, less recognized uh, jurisdictions or tourism destinations, and we are people who are doing tourism uh, a lot uh, less than we have been doing tourism to outpace us and introduce international airports and to give themselves a competitive edge. We cannot afford to do that. And so this bill, Madam Speaker, has become absolutely necessary, and I rise to give it my fullest support, and I impress upon my colleagues to do so. Madam Speaker, in our quest to develop our country, my last point, we are attempting, Madam Speaker, to advance the conversation when it comes to tourism's economic impact beyond jobs. But Madam Speaker, with our Village Tourism Initiative, which we hope to start at the end of January, I'm happy to announce that the CARICOM Development Fund, the board has met and has approved the funding for St. Lucia's Village Tourism Program for $2.7 million. But what this will do, Madam Speaker, it will give the people of Labry a chance. It will give the people of Ancillary with Village Tourism Initiatives a chance. And the people of Chozelle, and the people of Groselay, and the people of Soufri, an opportunity to also participate in the expansion of the tourism sector, Madam Speaker. When we launch the Village Tourism Initiative, they will be called upon. The framework, the environment will be there, Madam Speaker, for them to open up smaller inns, guest houses, and participate, Madam Speaker, in the new trend. Led by booking engines like Airbnb and Booking.com and Expedia, Madam Speaker, also giving small industry within the tourism sector a chance to compete and a chance to, com to participate in the wide-ranging economic opportunity that exists for the development of the sector. Madam Speaker, the records show that the non-traditional accommodation sector in St. Lucia is also growing at a rapid rate. And so while we are not able to trace the amount of people going to villas and other alternative accommodation, Madam Speaker. Estimates suggest that this sector is growing by 11% per annum. We must, Madam Speaker, therefore, plan for the future, implement this bill. And so, Madam Speaker, I'm very, very pleased with the uh, framework uh, that has set out for the establishment of this bill, where it clearly suggests that the money is going to nothing else but the development of the airport so that we can expand the airlift capacity of our country, grow tourism, grow the GDP numbers, create economic opportunity for our people, create jobs and, and opportunities for small businesses to provide ancillary services. Madam Speaker, I thank you very much. Honorable Member for Denry North. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise to make a very brief contribution to the debate on the Airport Development Bill. But Madam Speaker, in much the same way you granted the latitude to the Member of Parliament for Castries North, to preface his contribution on the bill by acknowledging the presence this morning of the members from the St. Lucia National Council for Differently Abled Persons. I want to take the opportunity, Madam Speaker, to say that since the last time we met as a parliament, 
there have been a number of developments in our country that I seek your permission to mention very briefly um, as a preface to my contribution to the debate on the bill. I will mention just three, Madam Speaker. Firstly, I want to commend the Royal St. Lucia Police Force for successfully staging Police Week 2017, the highlight of which, Madam Speaker, for me, was a church service held at the St. Michael Roman Catholic Church in my constituency, which was immediately followed by an absolutely flawless parade in the same community to the delight and enjoyment of onlookers, myself included. Madam Speaker, also last week, they held the Miss Police and Allied Services pageant, and that was won by a constituent of mine representing the Pridia Lassene unit in the Ministry of Agriculture. And so, Madam Speaker, I think it is fitting today to commend Commissioner Mo Mosheri, his deputies, Ms. Henry, Mr. Deasy, and of course the four assistant commissioners, as well as all the other hardworking police officers whose duty it has been to keep us safe in this country. Secondly, Madam Speaker, I want to take the opportunity to congratulate on my personal behalf and on behalf of the entire sports fraternity of our country, a 16-year-old cricketer from the community of Bogis, constituency Babono, who is a student of the Babono Secondary School. He goes by the name of Kimani Melius, Madam Speaker. Kimani has been selected onto the West Indies on the 19 team to represent the West Indies, Madam Speaker, in the Youth World Cup scheduled to bowl up in New Zealand next month. Finally, Madam Speaker, I want to congratulate the hundreds of students from the South Louis Community College who graduated from that institution on Sunday. Uh, Madam Speaker, it was rather disappointing, and as I, I walked through the crowd, you could have heard the expressions of, of disappointment from those in attendance at the fact that there was not a single government minister in attendance. But be that as it may, Madam Speaker, I want to wish all the, the young students who graduated all the best in their future endeavors. Madam Speaker, as it relates to the airport development bill, I want to state from the outset that I support any program that is meant to improving the existing effort in Beaufort. Madam Speaker, I firmly believe that there is a need for improvement. However, when the United Workers Party came into office, Madam Speaker, in 2016, they found an existing arrangement, a financing modality, which in my opinion, Madam Speaker, offered more to St. Lucia as a financing option than what we are entertaining today. And Madam Speaker, in my very brief presentation, I will attempt as much as possible to reiterate some of the points that were made by the colleagues on this side who spoke before me. Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister is on record as stating that the country is broke. This is not a new phenomenon. It is something that we alluded to when we were in government. So we are not surprised and we're not ascribing blame to anybody in terms of the financial situation that confronts our country today. But if an additional loan, Madam Speaker, of over $400 million, Madam Speaker, that cannot be in the best interest of the people of St. Lucia. Madam Speaker, the PPP arrangement or the public-private partnership arrangement, arrangement that we spoke about as an administration, is a modality that is being embraced by countries all over the world. And when you research airport development, Madam Speaker, with a specific focus on the financing arrangement, you will, Madam Speaker, discover that the PPP arrangement is the preferred option to finance. And Madam Speaker, while engaging in some research and making a comparative analysis in terms of the different financing options available to countries, Madam Speaker, I was astonished to see that countries such as India one of the leading economies in Asia and of the world, Madam Speaker, have given even new meaning to the PPP approach in relation to financing airport. And there is a lot that can be deciphered, Madam Speaker. There's a lot that you can chew on when you look at the different airports that have been upgraded in places like India 
and the benefits that they were able to derive from the PPP arrangement. Madam Speaker, if an additional loan of over $400 million, not only will it further exacerbate an already bad debt situation for the country, Madam Speaker, but that particular borrowing option can be used to do so much, Madam Speaker. That borrowing option, Madam Speaker, can be used to commission the hospitals that we've not been able to commission as a country. And in much the same way we've said that we're not going to politicize crime, I believe healthcare too, Madam Speaker, should never be treated as a political football. And that when the hospitals, if commissioned or when commissioned, they can only benefit St. Lucians. And illnesses, ailments, injuries do not come up on people because or based on your affiliation. And so, Madam Speaker, I'm saying in an environment where the cash flow of the government is already so depleted, I would prefer the government of the day, Madam Speaker, embracing the PPP, where that extra financial financing burden is not placed on our people, but instead, Madam Speaker, it is shared with a private entity, thereby giving us greater spending flexibility in terms of the monies that we are able to raise. Madam Speaker, very recently I was told by a very senior person in the public service that the Ministry of Finance has actually instructed or they've hinted that programs to be financed by bonds may not happen because of the situation on the market. And I'm saying this, Madam Speaker, vis-a-vis -vis an additional $400 million that we are going to borrow to construct an airport. We have hospitals, Madam, two hospitals, as I said, Madam Speaker, that are yet to be commissioned. We have facilities that are in dilapidated states. We have roads, Madam Speaker, that are in chronic states of disrepair. And Madam Speaker, all I am trying to impress upon the minds of colleagues in this honorable house is that to borrow an additional $400 million to finance an airport is not the best way to proceed in this particular situation. I said at the beginning that I support any move whatsoever to rehabilitate, to upgrade, and to modernize the airport. We need it. We need to give character to the, to the airport. And somebody said earlier this morning that the airport is the first point of interface with visitors and the destination. And Madam Speaker, I'm always happy to know that St. Lucia can take the lead on the sub-regional level and at the regional level. And if we are lagging behind in terms of airport infrastructure, Madam Speaker, I believe that this too is justification for the upgrade that we're looking at. But to put an additional $400 million on the existing debt portfolio cannot be in the best interest of our country. Madam Speaker, the previous um, arrangement for financing the airport, which we met when we came in to government, was one that we decided to do away with because after carefully examining all the critical components of that arrangement, we thought that it was inimical to the people of St. Lucia, and that is why we opted for a PPP. But today, Madam Speaker, one has to ask the question, what is the motivation? What is the motive? Why is it that this government is so hell-bent on resorting to an arrangement that had already been discredited? Madam Speaker, in the process of foregoing the PPP, which they found there, I'm being told that St. Lucia has been asked to pay a penalty to the IFC of over one million US dollars. And in an environment, as I said, where money is hard to come by, there's a lot that we can use 100 million US dollars to do in our respective constituencies as parliamentarians and in a country, Madam Speaker, where there is so much to be done and where the people are demanding so much of the government. So, Madam Speaker, comme je dis, ça l'est là, mais qu'à supporter plein gouvernement pour bâtir un airport neuf, mais qu'à supporter le gouvernement pour plein yoni, qu'on a voulu faire un airport là, plus mieux passé hier. Mais ça, mais qu'à dire, Madam Speaker, c'est une manière gouvernement qui a acheté un argent pour faire un airport là, ça c'est une bagarre, une manière difficulté et puis, et qu'on dit gouvernement a pris un loan qui qui a coûté nous plus que 400 millions de dollars. Le gouvernement s'est posé de chaîne à l'argent et à l'argent là, côté l'argent pour faire l'aéroport, parce qu'il y a seulement un dette par le gouvernement nous, mais ça c'est un arrangement nous de qu'il y a un travail et puis une compagnie privée pour faire l'aéroport là, plus mais passer hier. 
Mais moi, je vous dis, Madame Speaker, on a bien tout John Henry Nof qui voulait moi ici à vous parler Bayo, that moi qui a supporté pour nous rebâtir les portes là, mais le gouvernement n'est pas gardé um, qui manière il a joué dans l'agence ça et pour être prêté plus que 400 millions de dollars, moi pas quoi ça en a tiré pays nous. Um, à dans le temps que nous tous à copain et nous tous à d'accord that le gouvernement n'a pas mis un pile l'argent pour faire un chèque c'est bien là, le monde veut le gouvernement faire. With these few words, Madam Speaker, I conclude my presentation. Honorable Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources, and Cooperatives. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And thank you for the opportunity to make my contribution on this bill, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, during the course of this morning, going to this afternoon, you have heard a lot from those on the other side as it pertains to the bill that you are now discussing. And I'm sure, Madam Speaker, you will allow me some latitude to respond to some of the statements that have been made by those on the other side as, as far as the Agro-Processing Center, the Fish Marketing Corporation, the Senusha Marketing Board, because we spoke about it. Because, Madam Speaker, whilst we're discussing the bill and a member from you fought north, took the latitude to speak to these issues. I think it's appropriate as a minister responsible to at least to clear the air on his concerns. Madam Speaker, you heard that. Why you don't speak before me? But I will say, Madam Speaker, in this honorable house, it's not what time I speak. Number one, number two, number three is on what section of the house that I speak from. And that's what's important. But Madam Speaker, I stand to give support to this bill. And Madam Speaker, I will endeavor to answer some of the questions that have been asked. You heard that we are weak at government by the member from Castle South. You heard that we are taking a loan for $400 million. And you heard that, based on his contribution, that his government, based on the intention and proposal as far as the development of the airport is concerned, was not incurring any debt. I will speak, I will speak to these matters. Madam Speaker, member from Gifford North said that they were serious about the Gifford Airport development. They were serious about the Gifford development project. They, he said that they were, in a well, they, were in a, they, they were well in an advanced development stage. And of course, he spoke to Win Christen, and you refer to Section 3, Win Christen, the monies that people would ask to pay as far as what we're going to put on the tickets. And the government is taking a load. And I speak, I sat and asked myself, is he correct? Is the members on the other side, are they correct? I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that they are not, they're not remembering, Madam Speaker, during the time, what they did. And I had the opportunity, Madam Speaker, to discuss in the, in the upper house my concerns as to the changes that they were making as it pertains to what they formed. I had the opportunity 
to discuss that. And sometimes, in fact, a while ago I was saying to myself that the member for, from Castries South would not be aware because he's still new in the game. But upon reflection, Madam Speaker, I'm sure he'll remember because we all know that he was involved in writing the many speeches that the then Prime Minister would have delivered in this house. He would be aware of it. Madam Speaker, let's, make, let's do some comparisons. The Hironoa International Airport Development Bill that was presented to make changes to what they found in two, when they came in in 2011, which was presented in this honorable house, 2015. They came in 2011, but they came to this honorable house in 2015 to speak about the Hinoa International Airport development. And if we hear that we are well on our way, we are in an advanced stage of development. <laughs> So I want to ask myself, I want to ask myself, Madam Speaker, if that, the pace of that development really sends a signal out there that we are well on our way. Four years afterwards, four years afterwards, Madam Speaker, they came in this honorable house and passed a bill, but we were well on our way. And we understand and appreciate that the impact, the positive impact that the Hironora effort would have on the, our development. But Madam Speaker, we all know that those on the other side just like to talk and talk and more talk. Madam Speaker, The member from, from Castries South spoke about the IFC and the World Bank. And he spoke about how our, our ideas is going to cost the government $400 million. But Madam Speaker, in this very bill they submitted in this honorable house in 2015, and if you allow me to make reference to this bill, Madam Speaker, Page five of the bill, the Hironora International Airport Development Act, speaks to an act to facilitate a public-private partnership between the government of St. Lucia, the St. Lucia Air and Seaport Authority, on a concessionary for the development of the Hironora International Airport and, and for related matters. That's what you have presented in 2015. <laughs> now, Madam Speaker, let's make some comparison. Page nine of that bill. Page nine, Madam Speaker. Number 12. Content of concession contract. What type of contract that they propose and they pass to go into with the concessioner? Madam Speaker. And 12B, and that is why I'm supporting the bill that we bring back here. And that's why we're going back to what we started. Because it's better for St. Lucia and it's more beneficial for St. Lucia. 12B, Madam Speaker. 12B of that bill, of that act, thank you. Subject to paragraph C, the concession contract shall not exceed 30 years from the date of execution with the option to extend the term as agreed by the parties to the concession contract, 30 years. 
So how it is, you, are coming to, you came to this parliament and passed an act to give a contract to a concessioner to run the airport for 30 years with an option to continue with their running that airport. Now, Madam Speaker, let's do some maths. Because we told them they can do the maths. Let's do some maths. When the Prime Minister addressed the then Prime Minister, Madam Speaker, when he addressed this Honorable House, that's Dr. Kenny Anthony, in 2011, Madam Speaker, in 2011, and I'm quoting him. I'm quoting him, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker, he said that for the year 2011, 2012, page 49 of his budget address, he said for the year 2011, 2012, the government was expecting to raise 10 million dollars, 10 million US dollars. 10 million in 2011, 2012. Madam Speaker, 10 million. I'm just using that as an average. At the, at the, at the, at the, at the rate of 25 US, it was? 25. 25 US per passenger. Now, if you use that figure, Madam Speaker, as a benchmark, and that's, I mean, I'm, I'll come to it in a while. But if you use that figure as a benchmark, with 30 years contractual arrangements, Madam Speaker, how much are we giving away to the, concession, to the, to the concessioner? How much? How much are we giving away? How much are we giving away? So is it not more to our benefit? Is it not to our benefit, Madam Speaker, for us to manage this facility? Because we're giving away twice the cost of the airport. Can I come to that? We are do, giving it away at twice the price of the airport at 35 US dollars per passenger. All right? So to me, it makes more financial sense, based on the thinking of this government, to review, to review what's reform and to say, look, we are losing 100%. Because if you talk about 400,000, 400 million dollars alone, when you do the calculation, Madam Speaker, it will be 300 million US dollars which will equate to almost a billion dollars. So is it better for St. Lucia, Madam Speaker, for us to say, look, let me review, and let's go back to, 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 a, to a, 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 a situation where St. Lucians can benefit? Isn't it better? But Madam Speaker, that's not all. That's not all. Madam Speaker, <coughs> number six, Number 16, part two, fees and charges. Number 16, in addition, in addition to the fees and charges, which was at the time 35 US, which of course, Madam Speaker, I want to inform this honorable house that whilst it was 35 US during our time, and the member for Beaufort North talk about we increasing it, we increasing it, they passed a memo, Madam Speaker, in cabinet, cabinet memo number 384 of 2015, June of 2015, to increase it to 55 US dollars. You wasn't was in the cabinet? <laughs> 55 US dollars. You don't know. You don't know. So you move it from you move it from 35 and you brought it to 55 US dollars. So, here it is, Madam Speaker. Here it is, Madam Speaker. The, here it is, Madam Speaker. We are saying that, look, we're going back to 35 US dollars. You surprising US dollars? And, and, and you're hearing that, we're hearing that we're increasing it and people cannot travel. But, Madam Speaker, I want to say here this, this afternoon, 
For 30 years, I've said that. I don't say this after Madam Speaker, that when they came in, based on the address of the Honorable Prime Minister in 2011, 2006, they got in the, in the log box, Madam Speaker, and that, these are the words of the Prime Minister, they got 17.7 .7 million US dollars in the log box. <coughs> That's what the Prime Minister said in his address, 2000. And 13, 2012, 2000, 2011, 2011-2012. 11.7 million dollars. So you know, Madam Speaker, if you had continued with the 35 dollars US, you know by now we'd have paid off the airport. It'd not be any debt on government. It's a debt on persons traveling through the country. So when they stand up here and say, "Look, we are taking additional debts and we're running the country into more debts." They're just misleading St. Lucians, Madam Speaker. They know that well. They're just misleading St. Lucians. Madam Speaker, and that's not all. Apart from the 35 or 55 US dollars they were going to they were, they were going to give the concessioner, Madam Speaker, apart from the 55 US dollars they were going to give the concessioner, which worked out to be, if you, if you multiply it by the time in 2011, when you look at the visitor's arrival of 980,000 persons average, right? But in 2011, there's 1.09 million people going through St. So you saw an increase in the visitor's arrival. If we had, if they had continued, Madam Speaker, and the solutions are smart, that's why they vote them out. Because if that continue, Madam Speaker, there's a section there, navigation and communication charges. That also was going to the concessioner. In addition to the, to, to the fees and charges of 55 US dollars, they were giving the concessioner, Madam Speaker, the navigation and communication charges. And, and these charges would be determined by the Minister of Finance. In addition, Madam Speaker, on page 12 of that act, which they, they, they pass in Parliament, they have a section, other fees. Other fees, Madam Speaker. And they said that the Minister of Finance, with discussions with the concessioner, could discuss and agree on other fees. So, Madam Speaker, we have a situation that the government has said that we to plan to continue ça nous vient là. Nous avons bail mon nom qui qui manager manager et pot là top là. Nous quoi nous ça fait pas comme nous-mêmes. Et pour ça nous venir ici aujourd'hui et puis nous en vé ça nous joint et puis en fait en fait changement pour nous pour nous ça ouais dat cet lucien qui bénéficier plus à sous ça nous voulons faire par rapport. Mais madame speaker I know that St. Lucians understands and appreciates and of course accept our model and they would, um, they would give us the support that is needed as, as far as the development of this airport is concerned. So I want to say, Madam Speaker, that while I'm supporting the bill, there's a section, of, two sections of the bill I feel that needs to be reviewed. There are two sections I believe need to be reviewed, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the section of where we're going to charge the carrier and we put a fee of $500, I think we should put a percentage of the ticket. I know why, Madam Speaker. The next 10, 15 years, you might say that $500 is too low. But if you have a percentage of the ticket, at least we have a more sustainable um, system as far as the collection is concerned. And Madam Speaker, the other section I want to speak about, and I think I'm hoping that we can discuss that at the committee stage, is in the schedule which I agree with the member for Cast Resol. I think that we should look at including some other categories in the schedule to be given um, some leverage as far as uh, exemption. exemption as far as the tax is concerned, especially the sport people. Like we heard a while ago from the member from Cassius, from Gifford, from Denry North, we have Mr. Melius from Barbados. 
and I want to congratulate Mr. Marison Babono. And I'm sure there are a number of other persons from Babono that will follow him. There's a gentleman from Ghana doing very well under, under the under 15. These are the individuals we need to support, Madam Speaker. So I'm hoping in coming to stage we can make these changes. But Madam Speaker, I want to say that I, I support this bill and I will not waste time going into marketing, but Madam Speaker, I'll spare you this. I'll take it at, at a different time. Because I'm sure the member here would remember the statement by his Prime Minister in 1998, 1999, about, about parastatal agencies. Do you remember that? So I'll spare you this at some point in time. Madam Speaker, I want to thank you very much for your attention. Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the discussion today is about a tax. And that is the reality. We're talking about a tax. And we're talking about increasing the tax to people who travel into this country. And we're also speaking about taxing tourism. Madam Speaker, I want to just begin by quoting for you from the IMF concluding statement of 2017, the Article 4. And it said, Madam Speaker, on point two, the short-term outlook is mildly, mildly positive, but presents some risk. Moderate growth is expected in 2017, primarily on account of continued strong performance in construction and agriculture, the overall outlook appears uncertain as positive developments in tourism, the, express, the expected increase in the number of hotel rooms and the opening of new direct flights from the U.S. may be stifled by the impact of the new airport tax. Now, so that wasn't said by me. It was said by the International monetary fund. So, Madam Speaker, we're talking about the tax. And it's very interesting today, Madam Speaker, and they say God works in mysterious ways, that there are serious things happening in the tax, in the matter of taxes throughout the world. The EU, Madam Speaker, has just blacklisted St. Lucia as a tax haven. And that happened today, this morning. St. Lucia has been blacklisted as a tax haven. And the finance minister for France, Mr. Lamer, he made the point that countries that are blacklisted may lose access to EU funds. So we sit here in our chairs of glory where we can attack people, where we can victimize people, where we can laugh at people, not understanding that there's a reality that exists in the real world and we cannot escape that reality. So in spite of what we say here, when we do not use our taxes, our tax policy and in an effective way, we get blacklisted. And when we get blacklisted, as the French Minister of Finance said, we lose, we can lose access to EU funds. I wasn't the one who said it. If you go into the, the, the New York Times, and we laugh at these things because we also, we are, we're so strong. We run these little countries, so we're strong, we're powerful. It was said in the EU, St. Lucia is blacklisted. We have to deal with that blacklisting, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we talk about taxes. I want to ask the government, what tax have they reduced? What tax, the only tax this government has reduced is VAT. They've increased the tax on petrol. They've increased the tax, the departure the tax. They've been... Taxes in the, in the courts have increased. What taxes has this government reduced to be speaking about taxes, taxes, taxes? The only tax this government has released is this government has put St. Lucia at risk in that they are boasting about taxes that impact on firms opening the head offices in St. Lucia. And what happens, Madam Speaker? is that there's got to be equal, there's something called ring fencing in the tax jargon. 
you cannot ask people to give you incentives, give you concessions, give you money, and then you are creating a tax haven for them in your country. Now, these are things we have to sit and we have to discuss. Not if arrogance and if scorn and if contempt. We have to discuss it, Madam Speaker. Because today, in spite of what we say in this Honorable House, in spite of the amount of jobs we can give in this Honorable House, fact is that St. Lucia has been blacklisted by the EU and it's a fact that we have to deal with or else we, we will suffer the consequences. So, Madam Speaker, I want to make the first point. What we are doing is we are imposing a tax. And secondly, St. Lucia has, take, has not taken any measures to reduce any taxation as we say all the time. Only what we did, we reduced that by 2.5%. We've put a petrol tax of 150, and we've also increased travel tax, Madam Speaker. That is a fact. The merits and the merits, I don't want to go into it now, but it's a fact. So when we speak about taxes, we must be careful what we say. Madam Speaker, if you have members on the other side, you will think that the PPP arrangements are arrangements made in hell. Jamaica, a favorite country, a country where we boast about, we want to follow. The Sangster International Airport in Jamaica is built with a PPP award, a 30 years concession for the Sangster International Airport. And that agreement was entered in 2003. Sangster International is built on the PPP. And Sangster International Airport got the award, Madam Speaker, of being one of the best airports in the world. So we sit here and we criticize, we criticize the, the, the PPP as if, what, as if it's a set of mad fellas and we're crazy. And I want to deal with some of the things the Minister Varika just said in, in a while. Because you see, Madam Speaker, the reality, we can talk, we can victimize, we can laugh at, but there are certain things, certain realities that hit you in government which you have to deal with. And the blacklisting is one, and there are more to come. So, Madam Speaker, the airport discussion began from as early as 2007 when the government changed. 2007. When in our manifesto at the time, we said that we were in favor of doing some work of improving the airport. But this government began negotiations on the airport from 2007. And they left government in 2011, and they hadn't built no, no airport as yet. They hadn't built the airport. So the point they are making is you come and you tell us that we started in 2012, and we didn't finish in 2016, but you started in 2007, and you did not finish in 2011. Let's find out why. You had the airport development tax. You said and you said you'd have had $50 million dollars in the accounts, or oh, it was endless money. And I want to go back to the Minister of Agriculture. I'll be with him in a while. Because you know, Madam Speaker, when we try to score cheap political tricks, cheap political points, we must know people are listening to us. If you have a mortgage for a house, if you go to the bank and you borrow to build a house, let's suppose you borrow $200,000 for, 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 uh, uh, for a poor person like me, that's what I have to borrow. I live in where I live. If you have to you borrow $200,000 a month and you pay back $2,000 a month, right? In one year, you pay $24,000. In 20 years, you pay $480,000. But you only borrow $200,000. So your logic, your, your logic of the interest, the interest is the interest. More than that, on your mo but you don't, you don't, you don't have a mortgage, boy. You don't have a mortgage. Interest compounds. Yes. You see, that's a problem. You do, you're not living in the world of reality. You see, you're not paying mortgage. Probably that's why. If you had a mortgage, you would know. <laughs> that's a problem. You don't have a mortgage. If you had a mortgage, you understand that. And there are bankers inside there. The bankers will tell you. It, the banks, the mortgage, your mortgage will increase. More than that, more than that, 
And that's, and that's the difference. You understand? It's more than that. So you see, so when you talk about collecting money, the ten million dollars a year, and you have that amount of money in, you see, you must rethink it. Bank, I come into this now. Two of us people. That airport development tax, they imposed it. They imposed it. And they said they had anything they want to see, see because they have the same figures. Anything they want. See whatever you had. I had complain about. Why don't you build the airport? Why didn't you begin the airport? And that is what the member for Castro is saying. There were factors that caused you not to be able to build the airport. And that is the point. If you're coming back later, you had your lockbox, you had your, your loan, you had everything. You had everything. Things were set. You were hard working government. You could have gone your way. Why didn't you start the airport? You did not start the airport because there were factors which you don't want us to talk about. But you have to come to the house when you're going to borrow the money for contingent liability. And we'll discuss it. Why didn't you not begin construction of the airport when you had everything in place? You had, you had the, 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 the lockbox. You had the airport development tax. You had, why didn't you build it? I'm coming to you just now. You're in a hurry, eh, Peter? Why are you so, why are you so aggressive, man? Relax yourself. Relax. Relax. So, man, speaker, you had everything in place, but you didn't start the airport. There must be a reason. We'll come back to that later. So, man, speaker, we have about the other way, as if the PPP is such a mess. Man, speaker, six airports in Brazil built by PPP. India, the Delhi airport and the Mumbai airport built by PPP. In Costa Rica, airports are built by PPP. In Bahamas, airports are built by PPP. The IMF has recommended to Barbados that they should try to get a PPP arrangement for the airport for the simple reason that airports need to be managed professionally and they need to be managed in a kind, in a certain way that will ensure that they are not a drain on the resources of the country. So the way you do it, Madam Speaker, is that you get the expertise to put their own money into the airport so your treasury is not burdened with that debt. So you put the private sector, they invest the money, they get their return, and your effort comes back to you. What is, what in that model is such a, a disgrace that you guys are crazy, you all didn't do it. In Singapore, a country that they always talk about, Airports in Singapore on the PP arrangement. The PP arrangement is a new way where governments get ease themselves out of the financial burden and put themselves in arrangement with the private sector so they can reduce their debt. That's what it's all about. It's, it's, it's not a mystery. It's not because we're wicked. It's not because we don't want to do it. We do not do it because, first of all, I want to make it abundantly clear that there was no agreement to build any airport in St. Lucia. When we came into government, there was no agreement to build any airport in St. Lucia because, because A&M, who had to put in $23 million, A&M failed the due diligence and the douche bank refused to lend us the money. And that is a fact. And you can jump high, you can jump low. That is a fact that you have to live with. So, Madam Speaker, AM failed the due diligence because the arrangement that they had before was AM would have to invest $23 million put, to put as their part of the bargain. And the douche bank would lend them the remainder. When the due diligence was, was done on AM, the douche bank said, We're not lending the money again. AM failed the due diligence and the, the, the deal fell through. So there was no arrangement. There was no agreement to build any airport in St. Lucia when it came to power. No agreement. And as we say, because this morning I heard, this morning I heard, Madam Speaker, that Greinberg was never discussed in his own house. Never discussed. My, my, I sat right there. 
I heard the name of Pastor Angel Cassis. At the time, the time Pastor Cassis, he spoke for about two hours on Greenberg. And at that time, Greenberg was made a document of the house. The agreement was made a document of the house. And I have the agreement here with me today. The agreement nobody can find. That's the agreement there. I found the agreement in the house. Agreement with the Thomas Institution and RSM production, but that's for another show. But we, was, we were told that was a complete secret. Nobody knew about it. The member for Central Castries, he spoke volumes and reams about Greenberg in his honorable house. But we say nobody knew about it. Let's move. Madam Speaker, PPP and the member from for Castries North said, they chose to do it their way. No problem, you're in government, you win elections, you're in control. Go ahead, do it your way. Question, man. Let us look at some of the realities of the PPP and some of the falsities and the falsehoods that we are seeing on this side, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, when discussions began on the development of the airport, because the deal between a and m and the douche bank had fallen through the government of the then st lucia labor party began discussions with the world bank with a view to building improving the airport terminal madam speaker there is an institution in the canadian government called global affairs canada that institution provided 1.8 million US dollars as a grant, as a grant to Slaspa. And that grant was to cover the transactions costs on behalf of the government of St. Lucia for a team of specialized consultants to implement the project. Not no fellow around the place, specialized consultants, Madam Speaker. And these consultants, what Serious global consultants, they were the ones. And the Canadian government gave a grant, not a loan. What St. Lucia had to pay was only 250 US dollars to put that whole deal together so that the IMF, 250,000, sorry, US dollars so they can put that whole deal together so we can get the construction, the concessionary agree agreement for the airport, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, after discussion, and you must understand, that was not a secret, you know. These discussions were held in public. The taxi people were contacted. The Chamber of Commerce was contacted. The, all the stakeholders, the leader of, no, not the leader of the opposition, sorry. The leader of the United Workers Party, he had the privilege of having a discussion with the people who were putting the transaction together. So it's not new to him. He was there at that time. He was leader of the United Workers Party. He had discussions with the IFC on the implementation of the PPP. So it wasn't something that happened in, in secret. It wasn't something that we, we put on, under the table. All the stakeholders, there was a communication strategy that was put in place to discuss the PPP arrangements for the government of St. Lucia, full slash for. That wasn't any secret. So here's what the concessionary agreement was, Madam Speaker. And it's important that we go there. Because, you know, I wouldn't have mind if the government came and said, and I come back to the development bank situation. I was in opposition, the development bank. I said to them, listen to me, you're in government, you want to go to the development bank, do your development bank. These are my concerns. But I didn't castigate them and call them this and this. I didn't do it because it is their choice. So they come and say, listen, that's my choice. In spite of all the problems with A&M, et cetera, I still want to go this way. I, I, that, that, that's your business. But do not come here and pretend as if the PUP arrangement is something that came from the sky. And because we're so wicked and we're so inefficient and we didn't get it done, that is why we don't have an airport. That is not true. And let me say some further facts. The PUP arrangement, Madam Speaker, would have given the government some fiscal space. Because what has happened is that with, with that, with their arrangement, some fiscal space with their arrangement, with their arrangement, 
you would have put in put a debt on the government of St. Lucia and also a contingent liability. So you have a debt in real terms and you have a contingent liability in the And we thought at this time it was not good economic policy because of the limited fiscal space to impose that kind of debt burden on the people of St. Lucia. So here is what the agreement is all about. Here is what the agreement is all about, Madam Speaker. It was a 40-year concession agreement under which Slasper and the government of St. Lucia would retain ownership and regulatory oversight over the Human over the Human International Airport through a concession fee, revenue, and corporate income taxes paid by the private investor. So the private investor would not get our airport for free. He would pay. He would pay a concession fee, revenue, revenue sharing, and corporate income taxes. And over the private investor in the arrangement that we have would not have got the airport free for 30 years. For 30 years, he would have paid a concession fee and his revenue and corporate income taxes. And it was calculated that over the life of the, of the agreement for 40 years, an estimated $1 billion of income would have been incurred, would have been incurred to Slasper and $580 million worth of income taxes. That is the agreement that was on the table. So it is not fair to say, it is not, the agreement, you have it, you know it. So it's not fair to say that, it is not fair, it is not fair to say, it is not fair to say, but when I have a serious discussion, I do here. I'm talking serious business. When we, so it's not fair to say, and, and Madam Speaker, it is not fair to say, it is not fair to say, it is not fair to say that that PVP agreement would have gone, it's just something, a haywire, that St. Lucia will get nothing, that's not true. St. Lucia would have got a billion dollars of revenue and 580 million dollars of income taxes from that agreement. Further. For the entire life of the concession, the private investor, Madam Speaker, will be responsible for the entire airport business and will design, construct, and finance any improvements necessary for all the facilities, including a new terminal building, a runway, a run, a runway taxiways, apron expansion, and improved power stations as well as operate and maintain all these facilities according to detailed performance criteria and international civil aviation standards. Also, Madam Speaker, this concessionaire had arranged a 30-year plan for the development of the airport. So in the 30 years, there have there, there been marginal improvements in the airport without the St. Lucia government having to pay one cent or incurring one one inch of liability. Wow. Now, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, when you have the, when you have PPP arrangements, Madam Speaker, you see, Madam Speaker, we believe, and I, I, I don't I don't I, I don't want to be sidetracked. We believe that we can talk glibly about facts when we know it is right. Like Satan and say, Granberg was never discussed in the House when it was discussed for two hours. I and mean, when we believe we can say these things, and people will believe us because of the political affiliation. But, but the reality is, the reality is, these things can be proven. You understand? For the man speaker. They talk about the time frame. They talk about the time frame. Now, the only reason why, the only reason why is that these things take time is because you are dealing with large projects, you deal with a lot of money, and you do not want to have to make all these phone calls. And you're dealing with a, with a tendering process 
that is very transparent and transparent and open. So you find nobody had to call the tenderer. So it was not days before it goes to the tender's board to call the tenderer and say, check that for me. That doesn't happen in these processes because the private sector, the private sector body that is, that is involved wants complete transparency because it's they are the ones who are spending the money. And that's the point I want to make. Since the private sector investor is spending the money, he's ensuring that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed because it's his money. You understand? But in that model, in, in that model, 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 in that model you have a free reign, direct award here, um, fresh start here. Everything you want, you have a free reign. You can do anything, it's a free reign. You, you run things, you're in control. You run things, you're in control. But in that other model, a model that the Jamaican government followed, a model that the government in Singapore followed, a model that the government in the Bahamas followed, the private sector investor has his money, so he protects his money. So we politicians, we, stay away from that. Only what we have is oversight oversight to ensure that the regulatory functions of the airport are properly done. That's all we have, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, in that process, for the 30-year life of the concession, the investment program is estimated there will be 118, US, 118 million U.S. dollars in new capital investment, 90 million in maintenance, giving a total of $208 million. Under the concession contract, the private investor is required to complete the mandatory construction work, totaling US 80 million within 40 months of the start of the concession. For the benefit of the government of St. Lucia, the concession contract requires the private investor to post a completion bond to compensate the government of St. Lucia for any delays or violations of performance requirements. These were some of the safeguards that were built into that concessionary agreement. So you can't have no cost overruns. You can't have no delays. You can't have any, because it's the private sector person who is investing the money. But at the same time, your airport still belongs to you, and you make a billion dollars in fees and five hundred eighty million dollars in taxes. And if you had, and you know, Madam Speaker, because because we know every, everything about finance, because we've got, we we know so much. We are so powerful. We are so powerful. We laugh at these things. But you have to go and check for yourself and look at the agreement with the government of Jamaica. The, the Jamaica government that you follow. Look at the Sangster Agreement. You see what's there. You understand? That is called a PPP, public-private partnership. And the reason for that is because you, the country, does not have the burden of the tax, Madam Speaker. Further, Madam Speaker. The proposed PPP structure does not require the government of St. Lucia to raise any financing for the development of, of the airport. As a result, the project has no negative impact on the government of St. Lucia's debt position. Now, listen to the argument. The argument is, you put an airport development tax, and very simple, in the life of simpletons, the airport development tax will be back to the airport. That is the life of simpletons. The airport development tax will pay back for the airport. If life was so simple, if things were done so simple, <laughs> a lot more things w w would happen. It's not as simple. It's not that simple, Madam Speaker. And that is why the IMF and the World Bank have recommended for major infrastructural projects of that nature, you go to PPP arrangements. First of all, to remove any cloud of doubt. So all the issues that we, don't, we do not want to speak about will not arise. All the issues that we are afraid to speak about will never arise. Will never arise. There will not be any any documents, there won't be any inquiry, there won't be any letters we can't find. It will not be just of nature. Because the burden would have not been on the government, 
So you'd have protected the government and the country would have been protected because the country would have had less debt, man speaker. So man speaker, we move on. We move on. Here is the financial agreement arrangement that they want to make you believe everything would go to the to the to the concession. Everything. Senator Lucia will get nothing. Senator Lucia get nothing. Here is the agreement, man. Here is the concession agreement that was that was in the concession agreement. Apart from the one billion dollars and cop free revenue of one billion dollars and corporate in the taxes of five hundred eighty million dollars undiscounted over the life of, of the concession, the concessioner will collect and remit monthly to Slatsbo all passenger security charges and navigation and communication charges. The concessionary will collect and remit monthly to Slatsbo all passenger security charges and navigation and communication charges. These two charges are for the direct use and benefit of Slatsbo and the government of St. Lucia. The concessionary will also collect, receive, and retain all the remaining fees and charges, excluding the two charges mentioned above during the concessionary period. The amount of these charges is set in line with the regulatory mechanism in the concession agreement and is reviewed and approved by Slasper. The concessionary will also collect and return the aeronautic, the, the, the non-aeronautical revenues generated from commercial activities at the airport. So, Madam Speaker, what that means? There will be a revenue sharing between the private sector and the government. And in that deal, because the private sector, because they've set up a performance bond, they would ensure that it doesn't fail because they would bring their expertise to the development of the airport in St. Lucia. And we would benefit by getting a billion dollars and $580 million of income tax, Madam Speaker. The the transaction process, Madam Speaker, included a comprehensive due diligence evaluation of St. Lucia's aviation sector, including both the HIA and DOT SL charge efforts, with the objective of developing an appropriate transaction structure and the market and tendering of the transactions with the investors, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, at the time when this government came into power, the bidding process was almost complete. Slaspa's fight had finalized negotiations with three pre-qualified investors for successive markups to the draft concessionary agreement, Madam Speaker. But, Madam Speaker, the transaction structure, three major airport developers, three major airport developers had shown interest in Human Rights International Airport. Three major airport developers, Madam Speaker because they had seen the document, they had seen what we were offering, they had looked at, they had, they had looked at a complete study of St. Lucia's tourism industry, of the use, use of the airport, of how many passengers will come, they done a thorough analysis. And three, the tender process management was launched on July the 7th, 2015. For those of them that say we did nothing, July the 7th, 2015, the tendering process was launched. And three of the world's biggest airport developers had showed interest in Human Rights International Airport. These, these airport developers were Vinci, Vinci, a consortium of Vinci Airport. With Vinci Airport, they operate 24 airport facilities in Portugal, Cambodia, and France. On April the 1st, 2016, Vinci acquired two other airports in Japan, making the company one of the world's top five airport operators. That company saw an interest in St. Lucia. So, only the government, the government was so bad. We are doing so many things. That company saw an interest in St. Lucia. So, these people are stupid. Sedico. Sedico is a Hungarian company with principal businesses is to make investments in airports and airport-related businesses Globally, Celico controls airports in Argentina and operates more than 30 airports in Argentina, Ecuador, Peru, and Italy. That company showed interest in St. Lucia. Then there is Asur High Star. Uh, it's a New York Stock Exchange company trading that 
exchange, a New York Stock Exchange Company man Twitter that manages the Mexican the effort in Mexico. They also showed injustice on Twitter. These three companies showed injustice on Twitter. And after, after all the due diligence, after all the discussions, after the tendering process, one of them dropped out. So in the end, Vinci and Sedico were the two companies that were interested in the concessionary arrangement in the, in the United Europe, in the airport, airport. These two companies, man speaker. But man speaker, they tell, they tell you about the timetable. No, all that's happening, there, there are no issues. You have no discussion about who asks who questions. We can't have, there's no question on don't say that. There is no question on you can't find things in, in the Attorney General's office. Nothing of that nature. There is no question on who is investigating who for what. There is no question. No question. These things are happening. They're happening in a professional manner because world global firms are on the verge of coming into an arrangement with the government of San Francisco. Global firms. Not firms like a and that, that failed due diligence with the douche bank. No, not, not, not this firm. Global firm. Global airport development firm are the ones who should interest in San Lucia, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, here is the time frame. And you know, Madam Speaker, I take time to go through these details because I know in the responses that is what's go go going to be found. There is not going to be any meaningful, there is not going to be any meaningful discussion on what I've said. Just do it. It's just do it. There is not going to be. Now, Madam Speaker, look at the, look at the timetable, Madam Speaker. Of course, I'm afraid of this. I'm a clean guy. I'm afraid of this. I, I, I don't deal in dirt. Issuance of final bid documents will happen September 2016. Receipt of bids. Remember, I told you, Madam Speaker, that the tendering process was launched on 7th of July 2015. That's when it was launched, Madam Speaker. Receipt of, of bids, Madam Speaker, end of September. Evaluation and award of concession, mid-October 2016. Commercial closing, sign of concession agreement, mid-November. And final close in May 2017. That was a timetable that had been set up for the Uno International Airport. That was a timetable. And man speak, all these things happened. All these things happened without any fanfare, without any confusion in the bidding process, without any phone calls, without 130 phone calls between November and February. All this is happening without all that. There was no need for these things because the, the whole process was transparent. The whole process was clear. The whole process was put together by Slaspa with little involvement of politicians, by, by the professionals of Slaspa, after communication and discussion with the private sector in St. Lucia who agreed to the process. There were meetings in the Chamber of Commerce. There were meetings with, with the taxi association. There were meetings with stakeholders where the process, where the transaction module was discussed. And there was, a, there was broad agreement. There was broad agreement. There was broad agreement, Madam Speaker, that the PPP arrangement was the best arrangement. And in that arrangement, Madam Speaker, the United Workers Party were involved. They held discussions with the IFC. They were held against the IFC. And the IFC explained to them what they were doing. Because we were not reinventing the wheel here. They, you make, they make you believe as if we are reinventing the wheel. That we are the first persons in the world to do that. that was, that's not the case. That is happening in several places in the world as we speak. Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, there was no attempt to interfere in the bidding process. St. Lucia's name would not have been where it is now. There would have been no discussion on who did what when. There would be no need for the Prime Minister to have to launch an investigation on a matter that is in the public domain. There would be no need for that. There would be no need for any of these things, Madam Speaker. We would have come here 
and we would have reintroduced the airport development tax because remember it was not it was put at zero but the argument was when the work on the airport started then the airport development tax would have been reintroduced so this bill there'll be no need for this bill because the bill that was repealed all what we had to do is we'd have to change the zero and put the figure that we wanted for the airport development tax so so in principle in principle man speaker what we were trying we the bill the airport development bill the charge was turned was set at zero it was set at zero that's what it was so man speaker what will happen is that we would not have had all the confusion that we, we, we have we have we have now there will be no need to seek any assistance on the the money the mutual legal assistance treaty which was signed in 1996 by the government of the United States Party. There will be no need for that. There will be no need for them to have any private investigations on any evidence that was, that was asked for in the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty. There will be no need for that. Because the whole process was transparent. The whole process had been discussed with the private sector. The whole process was discussed with SLASPA. The board of SLASPA was on board. There will be no need to seek any mutual legal assistance. There will be no need for that, man Speaker. But we, we come here today to speak about the process that was started by this government, that was obviously flawed, that did not, they started from 2007, they left government in 2011, they did not do it. When they got near, near doing it, the douche bank says, we're not financing you. Because one of your partners has failed the due diligence test. So they had, they did all that. Using all, all the government money for all them phone calls. And we had nothing. We had nothing. The country had nothing. So when we came to government in 2016, there was no agreement. There was no agreement to build any new airport in St. Lucia. So we had to start from scratch because that deal they had had fallen through. So between 2011, and, and they like to talk about, they like to talk about time frame. St. Jude, why are you like in St. Jude? They, they, they have to talk about time frames, and people. But we want, to go in, we want to go into time frames. Between 2011 and 2016, you had no deal to build any airport, although you had the airport development tax. So if it's just simple, if it's so simple, just put a tax and you build an airport. Why didn't you start the airport? Why is that the airport? And all the confusion. And, Madam Speaker, I will take your, that will come another time, because, you see, Madam Speaker, I will not, I will never go against your ruling. So I will not say all the issues that related to the request on the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty. I, I will not go, go, I will not go, go, go into that at this time, Madam Speaker. But all that will not be necessary, because, Madam Speaker, when we sit here in our, th in our, pal in our thrones, in our legal countries, and because we're in government, and we can victimize people, and we can make people cry, that we believe we can do whatever we want, and laugh at people, and scorn them, and treat them with contempt, and treat them with disgust. The reality, as the reality that hit us now, with the EU blacklisting St. Lucia as a tax haven, that's the reality as we deal with. So anything you, we get up and we say here, hey. and if we cajole, and we laugh at, and we, and we, we even victimize, and we believe that People here, uh, you can victimize them, you can laugh at them. The reality is, you have to face that. And even though you like it or not, you have to face the EU that has blacklisted St. Lucia as a tax haven. That's what you have to face. And that's the reality we have to face. So, Madam Speaker, the, the back to the effort development, I'm putting it to this government to rethink, rethink on taking a loan to build the effort. There has been too much confusion relating to airports in Trinidad and Tobago. Up to this day, under the same mutual legal assistance treaty, there are people in Trinidad who are wanted in the United States for the airport construction. There are people, I want to save, I love St. Lucia. The, the member for Ansel Canary said that I said about the jobs. Why don't I, you don't think I wouldn't be happy if St. Lucia has full employment? I'll be the happiest man in the world. 
I would be happy if the has full employment. If every boy in Sanusia is working, I'd be happy. Why won't I be happy for that? So why do you think I want, I want to have full employment? I've been my seat more, better. So I want full employment for St. Lucia. So the, the point I'm making, to save St. Lucia's good name, to save St. Lucia's good name as far as this airport thing is concerned, I'm urging this Prime Minister. This Prime Minister, I'm urging you. I'm urging you. Rethink that model. Do not be misguided. Because the PPP arrangement is the best arrangement for St. Lucia at this time based on our fiscal situation and based on what has happened to airports in this region. Have a look, read, think, talk to your, to your, to your colleagues. They will tell you that all of them regretted that they ever built an airport. All of them regretted that they did not take a PV model to build an airport. The government of Barbados right now is being told by the IMF to sell the airport on a PP model. You have a, a, you have a problem with VG Airport. You don't know what, what, what to do in it. You, you lose money at VG Airport, but you can't. That's a problem you have. That's a real problem with VG Airport. So the whole business of airports is complicated business. It's not as simple as a minister sitting on here and attack people and say whatever he wants without any facts and sing to the gallery. It's more serious than that. Airports are problems. Airports need expert management. So I'm saying again, Anzida, that this bill, this bill would have been relevant, would have been more acceptable to us, would have been more trustworthy going to the member of Cassie South if the airport was being built on a PVP basis. I am saying I don't trust that process. I do not believe based on evidence that I have before me, based on evidence of airports in other parts of the region, I do not believe, Mr. Prime Minister. And Mr. Prime Minister, you must sometimes listen to the other side. Because, you know, even though you're big and powerful now, time flies, in 2018, you must listen to the other side. And I'm saying to you, rethink this arrangement where you're going to borrow $150 million to build an airport because you will find yourself in major problems. And I, I love St. Lucia. I don't want any St. Lucian, whether he's UWP or Labour, to want to go to the state under mutual legal assistance, where he can't travel to the state because he won't tell in the state for, 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 for questioning. I don't have any St. Lucian. I want St. Lucia's good name to be preserved. And if you notice, and if you notice, what I'm saying to you, if you, if you play, if you, play you, you, you don't understand what I'm saying. I do not want any St. Lucia to be wanted in the state under the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty that the government signed in 1996. And I'm saying to you that because of the history of airports, where in the neighboring country, several of these people are wanted in the state for the same airport construction, under the same mutual legal assistance treaty, they want it in the state for airport construction. Save St. Lucia that. Save St. Lucia that discomfort. Save St. Lucia that problem. Save St. Lucia that embarrassment. Pull back. You, you want to stop the speaker stop when we're talking? Man, you're becoming a dictator. But I don't understand this. Man, 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 you, that, that is, how are you going to tell you to stop me? Man, I elected... I'm, elect, I'm an elected member, you know, for longer than you too. Uh, I mean, so why do you, why, why do you want to stop me when I'm speaking reality? Yes, true. I'm saying to you, save St. Lucia that, that, that embarrassment. Save St. Lucia investigation on the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty. Save St. Lucia. Change your mind on building this airport to the way you want to do it. Re you have the, the IFC will come back. The World Bank, where, where you're going for all the money for the, DV, the DVRP, etc. the IFC is a body of the World Bank. They will understand you. They will forgive you. Go back. Go back to the PVP model to save yourself and to save St. Lucia and to save embarrassment for some members of your government. I thank you, Mr. Mansu.
Honorable Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport, and Civil Aviation. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I, I thought the rules were clearly established earlier in terms of the debate and where it was supposed to lead to on this airport development bill. Madam Speaker, in listening to the presentations on the other side, and listening to the member, the leader of the opposition and member for Castries East, at some opportune time, Madam Speaker, I hope that he can respond. He indicated that the IFC, which was engaged, was being paid by a Canadian company, and also that the, the payment from St. Lucia was to about 250,000 US dollars to the IFC. Madam Speaker, I'm baffled. I'm baffled because I have a document that indicates projects funded by the Airport Development Fund. Now, Madam Speaker, at another time and another place, it was brought to my attention that the member, and I don't know if it's true, that the member said on some talk show there was no airport development fund in any logbox. I wouldn't think the member would say that. And so I have not been able to substantiate. But Madam Speaker, if IFC is the same as International Financial Corporation, on the breakdown of expenses from the airport development tax, there is an amount, development of HIA, paid to the IFC, three million eight hundred and fourteen thousand eight hundred and forty two dollars and eighty five cents. These are funds that are highlighted as being paid to the IFC. Yet still I heard the member for Castries East say that only 250,000 US dollars was paid to the IFC. Madam Speaker? Madam Speaker, on a point of clarification, I, I said, Madam Speaker, that the government of Indonesia has spent 250 US dollars. In addition, the Canadian government for Global Affairs Canada has provided funding of 1.8 million US dollars, have I said. So, Madam Speaker, that begs a bigger question. If the Canadians paid 1.8, prov all right, provided funding. So, what did they provide the funding to do? But if they provide funding, I would assume the funding is provided to pay for the engagement of the IFC. And then we would have met the shortfall, if there was a shortfall, of the 250,000. So I am asking, I am asking, Madam Speaker, this amount to the IFC. Now, this is projects funded by the Airport Development Fund. The IFC was paid or the project funding for them from the development fund, not from the Canadian fund, not from SLASPA. Mm -hmm. Airport Development Fund. The ADC. Now, there was supposed to be a lockbox, but apparently somebody broke the box. Because the amount of expenditure I saw, and I'm coming down to that, Madam Speaker, because you see, we have a responsibility in this house when we speak to present the facts. And contrary to what they may say, 
on this other side. They've not been able to prove that anything that I have said here is not factual. Okay? So, T.Y. Ling International. Drawings for HIA redevelopment. Five million. Seven hundred and thirteen. Five twenty. $529.85. Construction and Industrial Equipment Limited. Expansion of HIA apron. $8,741,393.41. cents. Construction and industrial equipment again. CIE. CIE. Rehabilitation of Turning Bay at HIA. $9,357,284.41. Mm. Energy dynamics. Standby supply and switch gear upgrade. HIA. $1,029,440.09. Condon New Energy Equipment Company Limited. Standby supply of switch gear upgrade, HIA. $573,796.29. FDL Consult. Environmental Site Assessment, HIA, $162,152.22. So, Madam Speaker, when the member for Castries is and leader of the opposition comes to this honorable house and make us believe that IFC was granting St. Lucia a favor. Their engagement only cost us $250,000. So if the Canadians provided $1.8 and St. Lucia provided $250,000, and these are U.S. dollars, and yet still, from the airport development tax, which was supposed to be in a lockbox. Now, Madam Speaker, why did we come to this honorable house and create a lockbox? A lockbox meant that no minister had the latitude to go and direct how that money should be used. That is why it came to Parliament. And Parliament made a decision that the money would be there. And the only reason the money would be used is for redevelopment of HIA. Now, oh, I heard a member for, for Castro South talking about, I see airports there. So what, what are these airports about? You thought it was HIA redevelopment. You thought not? <laughs> No, the member for Castro South spoke about that too. So, Madam Speaker, if the money was in a lockbox, at what point in time did the then government report to the people of St. Lucia how much money they found in the lockbox? You talk about transparency. You talk about what you did. And the people ought to know because this is the people's business. At what point in time did you report to the people and tell them we found $50 million in the lockbox? And as a result, we have decided that we are going to use this money to do the following things. And I remember sitting where they are there, Madam Speaker, in opposition. When these projects came up, I raised, and Hansard will show, Madam Speaker, that I raised questions about that in the House. Ask them what answers did they give. 
Go back to Hansard and show where you answered the questions that were posed about this. Yes, but I choose not to. I choose not to. So at the end of the day, the record speaks for itself. So, so the member for Castries East today said that they paid $250,000. So now, Madam Speaker, this warrants an investigation. It warrants an investigation. Oh, yes. It warrants an investigation as to why, as to why 3,800,000 was paid. Now, Madam Speaker, some people think that an investigation is a bad thing. I think that an investigation is the best thing that happens. Because when an investigation takes place, it is not politicians that judge you. It is the facts by which you are judged. Madam Speaker, in due course, in due course, Madam Speaker, they were waving documents. I can wave documents. So all the phone calls they mention in Madam Speaker, it's not how many phone calls you make. What's the content of the phone calls that you made? What is recorded? Madam Speaker, every email that I sent for five years in government is there. Every phone call that I made is there. You couldn't come up with anything. Zero. But you know, Madam Speaker, they want to make you believe. They want to make you believe. And Madam Speaker, I'm not afraid of that subject. I'm not afraid of that discussion. Because you see, you don't go to a store and buy honesty. You don't go to a school and learn honesty. And the people who want to speak about honesty, ask them what happened to the cows at Mosesi. Ask them if they can account for it. You see, Madam Speaker, mm -hmm. but coming back to where we are, they want to make you believe that we are not capable in St. Lucia. Now, Madam Speaker, mm -hmm. some people don't trust themselves. And I can well understand why they don't trust themselves. Because you know why they don't trust themselves? Because they know that the day they get the chance to lay hand on something, what they will do with it, I trust myself. There's nobody in this world that I trust more than me. Okay? So at the end of the day, at the end of the I didn't ask you to trust me. I'll tell you who to trust. You said you trust the member for Castries North. Well, the member for Castries North today spoke in this honorable house, and he is the one spearheading the airport project. So why not trust him now on this one? You are trusting him on other things. You all said it was sitting right there. So conveniently, conveniently we trust people. So today... Guy Joseph don't have nothing to do with the airport redevelopment. But at the end of the day, you see, it was never about Guy Joseph. It was about opposition to the development of the airport for the people of St. Lucia. That is what the discussion has been about, Madam Speaker. Now, Madam Speaker, the member for Castries is gave an elaborate presentation about a document, about the agreement that was only known to them. Ask him, as member responsible in the previous government for port services, under whose direct jurisdiction the airport development found itself, how many times did he give these details 
to this honorable house or to the people of St. Lucia. Oh, so Slaspa doing it now as you are in government. When I was in government, it's me that was doing it, not Slaspa. Oh, oh. I always make phone calls, and I will continue to make phone calls. But you see, Madam Speaker, here's the part of the equation that we are not dealing with. Ask them why it took four years for it to surface. Ask them, why did it take four years to surface what the deal was on the HIA airport? You know what happens, Madam Speaker? And I don't need to be a fortune teller to figure it out. With the UWP government, everything we do is out there in the open. So I heard them talking about DSH, DSH, DSH. When the Prime Minister signed the agreement for DSH, he did it on television for everybody to see. When the letter was signed for Ensworth, Asworth, for the 4,000 4, acres, ask them who knew about it. When the Greenberg was signed, ask them who knew about it. Ask them about Rochamel, who knew about it. You see, Madam Speaker, this UWP government will always be criticized by the opposition because we don't do things under the table and we don't hide to make negotiations. If we're negotiating, it's out in the open. There was nothing about HIA that was hidden. And you know, Madam Speaker, what is interesting, ask them, why all the invoices that was paid on the their watch to Robert Linguist was deleted from the Asikudo system, the, the, um, the government system at the Treasury. Ask them why every invoice paid was deleted. Not from SmartStream. No, Asikudo is with the airport, with Slaspa. SmartStream. Thank you. SmartStream. Ask them. But you see, Madam Speaker, they didn't know that I had all the copies before they deleted. <laughs> I had it. So, Madam Speaker, we heard them talking about now we have to pay the IFC $1 million. Ask them how much they paid to investigate me, Madam Speaker. Over a million U.S. dollars. The phone calls that they are talking about did not even come to $100,000. But they spent a million dollars to find out what was said on the phone call. And they found nothing. Huh? Who's investigating? Who's investigating? So. Go and say that outside. Go and say that outside. So, so you think, but I will, I have said, Madam Speaker, I have said in this house, I welcome an investigation. You, you know why I welcome an investigation? Because the investigation will set the record straight. Why are you all afraid? Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I know you will tell me, I know you will tell me, that may not be parliamentary language. I think there is a little too much cross talk across the, the chamber, please. Honorable Minister, please continue. Madam Speaker, after, you see, we, we're talking about the airport and we're talking about the model for the airport. And the, the members opposite want to criticize the model adopted by this government. But let me make a point, Madam Speaker. I hear so much about investigation. When the investigation was completed and nothing was found, the member for Castries East met me upstairs in the lawn. You know what he said to me? You sucker, we know you did things, but we just care fine. Madam Speaker, that never happened. <laughs> He's not speaking the truth. I've, I don't even I don't even speak to him. But he's telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I told him, I told him, continue searching. If it is there, you must find it upstairs the lounge. 
Upstairs the lounge. After you all got the report at Slaspan, you all found nothing in it. But Madam Speaker, I will have my day. I will have my day. Because, Madam Speaker, when this Labour Party decide to attack you, so they want to make you believe. I heard the members opposite talking about, oh, we're going to get an airport, and it's not going to cost us anything. Madam Speaker, any St. Lucian believe that there is somebody out there in the world who's going to build an airport for us that costs $400 million and it will cost us nothing? Now, I'll take on the member for Castries East on the figures that he was presenting there. Tax. He said they are going to pay taxes to the government of concessionaire. Would pay taxes of about 500 plus million. Now, Madam Speaker, our tax rate is about 30%. If our tax rate is 30%, now tax is paid after, on your, after your gross. Then, hold on, you net, you net out your expenses and what is left, earnings before tax. ETB, EBT, earnings before tax. Okay? Yes. After, for you, Madam Speaker, for you to pay 500 million in taxes over the life of this project to the government would mean that you have to make a minimum of 1.5 billion dollars profit. And I want you to challenge that. Challenge it. Stand on a point of order and challenge it. That, yes, if you're going to make, if you're going to be paying taxes and your tax rate is about 40% of your profit, then obviously, then obviously, so the IFC can give us a model where one company can come in here, run our airport, make one billion for themselves. Now that billion is after expenses. I want you to I want the people of St. Lucia to understand that. That is after they've paid for the airport. Because the airport is part of the cost of doing the business. After they've paid management, after they've paid for the full operation, they've taken off all of their expenses. They have a profit of $1.5 billion. And that would be at 33 and one third percent to make it $500 million. And the member for Castries East want me to believe that we're, giving, we're getting an effort free of charge. No wonder St. Lucia run bankrupt under them, Madam Speaker. Because it is obvious with that kind of reasoning. And when I said to a member, you don't understand anything about financing. They want to tell me, oh, is you that's the guru? I not no guru. What I know is how to use money <laughs> to gain wealth. And if you understand anything about wealth, you would understand that wealth is what you have when you have no money left. I know you can understand that. You won't understand that. You read West this cricket bankrupt. <laughs> Madam Speaker, most of the countries mentioned here, Madam Speaker, most of the countries mentioned here where you have these arrangements, Madam Speaker, I heard the member talk about India. How many thousands of airports are in India? You know, when, when we make comparisons, let's compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Don't try and compare apples to bananas. 
and, and try and tell me, okay, let's use that model. Now, the IFC. I want to deal with the IFC. Tell me who in the IFC is more honest than the people of St. Lucia. So, IFC can come and tell us what to do. They're transparent, they're above board. You want me to tell you about the IFC? And if they want to challenge me, Madam Speaker, they can challenge me. When I inherited the project on the Wasco that was headed by the same IFC, ask them what happened. And the gentleman who was in charge of the project here, ask him why they transferred him all the way to Africa. I leave it as that, Madam Speaker. Because when somebody is not here to defend their name, I am careful as to what extent that I go. But don't come and make it look like IFC is some kind of saint organization. I met with the IFC when the leader of the United Workers Party, I was at the meeting with the lawyers representing the IFC and Slasper, right at the boardroom at Slasper while I was in opposition. And the basic question that was put to the representative of the IFC, what is the benefit in your model for St. Lucia? And ask him if he has answered that question. And up to now, he cannot answer that question. Because, Madam Speaker, we are not building an airport. And we heard they said, oh, I was happy to hear today there was no deal on the airport. All the time, I thought I'd make a deal somewhere with somebody to build the airport. Because I heard them say that so much, I was wondering if I made a deal. But today, I heard the member for Castries is say, when they came in, there was no deal. There was no plan to go ahead. Everything had fallen through. Why did everything fall through? Because the government set a standard by which the airport would be built. Anybody coming to the table had to provide financing below 6%, and there would be no sovereign guarantee. No sovereign guarantee and below 6% interest on the loan. And anybody, anybody who came to this matter, if you could not meet that requirement, there was no arrangement with the government. And that was a decision made by the cabinet. That was not a decision made by a minister or by Slasper. If government of St. Lucia had to support the project, it had to fall within a certain scope of the financing arrangement. So, Madam Speaker, we came to this honorable house and I've heard so much about the airport development tax and the impact on travel. Madam Speaker, the member for Babono touched on it. What the members over there, what they are not telling you, Madam Speaker, is that under the United Workers' Party government, we introduced an airport development tax of $35 to build the airport. When the airport was completed, Madam Speaker, because we had put in a 20% on the earnings in the event that things had gone bad a year or two, and you could not meet your payments, so there was a 1.5 cover, 1.2. So over a 10-year period, you would have accumulated enough money to pay for an additional five years if you had a drop in passenger arrival. So at the end of the project, when we would have paid for the airport in full, the government of St. Lucia at the $35 would have had in excess of two, not the government, SLASPA, would have had in the lockbox in excess of $200 million. Now, Madam Speaker, how do concessioners work? How do concessioners work? This is what the Labor Party government offered the concessioners. 
Cabinet considered a memorandum dated 25th June 2015 and noted the intention of the Minister of Infrastructure, not Madam Speaker, who it is referring to. And noted the intention of the Minister of Infrastructure, Port Services and Transport to accept the recommendation of the Council of the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority to increase. I am not sure that's the right word. Because the way they speak about them, Madam Speaker, as if there was no intent to increase the airport service charge to facilitate the HIA public-private partnership transaction as follows. And that was dated 29th June 2015, Madam Speaker. An increase in the airport service charge in the amount of US $30 per passenger. An increase in the airport service charge in the amount of 30 US per passenger. The new airport service charge will be 55 US dollars and the Minister of Finance will determine the effective date of the new airport service charge. So my question to the members is, what is it you all are debating in the House today? What is that argument? What is it that you want to say to the people about the airport service charge? Because we were doing it for $35. You, in your brightness and your wisdom, decided $35 was not enough. So you offered the concessionaire $55 per passenger. Now, if you take the maths done by the honorable member for Babono, at the number of passengers that we have. So if nothing changed in St. Lucia, at the $55 per passenger, if there was no additional passengers coming to St. Lucia, the concessionaire would, would make in excess of $800 million over the life of that project. Now tell me something, and I will give you an example, Madam Speaker. So they say, don't put that burden on the people of St. Lucia. Let me take street lighting as an example. This same government went and negotiated with Caribbean Development Bank to take a loan of $11 million to change the street lights in St. Lucia when you have hundreds of companies out there who are willing to come and install all the lights for you, and you pay them based on the saving that you make from the electricity bill. They did not go that way. But you see, what they will not tell us, Madam Speaker, they will not tell us what the negotiations behind the closed doors were. Mm -hmm. So they will check the phone call mm -hmm. and check the record and find out when they've been in government who has control the pesticide spraying at the airport and at the seaport? Find out who are the people behind the scenes who negotiate and what they negotiate for. Take Greinberg as an example. It was mentioned by the member for Castries East. Take Greinberg. Where were the documents for Greinberg? At Earl Huntley's home. Nowhere in any government office. They said there's investigation on me. No document can be found in government. No government office can show a piece of document. So I assume it's at somebody's home and it will surface one of these days. But further to that, Madam Speaker, the member for Castries East went into elaborate detail of an agreement. Ask him where the agreement came from. Who was holding it? Huntley was still holding the agreement? You see, if you want to be upfront with the people of St. Lucia, be upfront. Don't present the information 
when it is convenient to you to present it to the people of St. Lucia. So the IFC had no sin. And go, and I heard somebody said it. Go and check the record of the IFC. Because what you will find out is that a lot of time these institutions come here and they want to tell us what to do and how to do it. But the places where they come from, they cannot say what to do and how to do it. So do I have questions about the IFC? Of course, any organization that would lead a country in this direction, I have to question. I don't question whether they were following the right process for contractor selection. And if that was so attractive, you talk about Vinci, but Vinci has met with the government. And you know what Vinci said? $55 is not enough for them to do the project. Okay? $55 is not enough. So if they are saying $55 is not enough, no wonder based on what the member for Babono highlighted, there are other models of payment that would have been brought in. So, Madam Speaker, an airport that is supposed to cost us, and I've heard the numbers, all of a sudden they, ha they stick on 400 million. When they came in, when they were in opposition, they said we are wasting money. That's too much money to spend on the airport. They need to spend less. So I heard they were looking at 88 million. So I wonder how 88 million US can amount to 400 million EC. And after they dropped the price of the airport, Madam Speaker, which means that they were dropping the size of the footprint of the airport, you know what they did? They increased the amount of money so somebody was not making money. It would be good, Madam Speaker, to investigate who would be affiliated to the concessionaires. When the concessionaires come and operate, who would be their partners in the operation? And Madam Speaker, I'm not afraid to speak because you can search what you want about me. You can only find what is there, as I indicated to the member for Castries East. So Madam Speaker, the logbox. I want to ask the members who broke the logbox. And how was the money for the logbox being used when we came to Parliament and we made a decision that IATA would collect the money and the money would go towards the development of the airport. Madam Speaker, I have confidence that the people of St. Lucia can run the airport as effectively as any concessionaire from anywhere in the world. You know what is sad, Madam Speaker? Our people do a great job when they have the worst of facilities. They make do with what they have. They try their best. And when something good comes, we believe that the people of St. Lucia are not good enough for it. And that's my problem with the model that they are bringing. Because you know what would happen, Madam Speaker? They bring a firm from outside. You know what they do? They bring in a general manager for the airport from overseas. And where you are paying the St. Lucia 10,000, they will pay that person 40,000 US with all kinds of allowances. Because you know what? It's not their money. Contrary to what the opposition want to make St. Lucians believe, every dollar of tax that is charged on everybody coming to this country is money that belongs to St. Lucia and to the people of St. Lucia. Every dollar. So don't come and make it look like all of a sudden the airport development tax is not our money. That's somebody else's money. Yeah. Madam Speaker, we understand the fiscal situation and the space that we have. We are not going to be reckless and just go and take a loan for 400 million and say just build an airport. But the latitude 
that this effort development tax gives, Madam Speaker, it allows us the latitude and the liberty to create more fiscal space for the government to operate. Because, Madam Speaker, if I were to apply the $55 that they have there, we could get the airport bill and we could get the seaport bill. Or we could get the airport bill and we can get the highway bill under that same arrangement. But when you bring in a concession, what benefit do we have from the concession? Madam Speaker, in business, nobody comes in business to make a loss. There are unfortunate circumstances and situations that may develop. So that is why these concessioners, when they want to come in, they want to milk everything up front, Madam Speaker. They want to make as much. And you can't blame the concessioner. Eh? That's what people are in business to do. But it is the persons you put in charge of your business that have to make the decision so that the decision can benefit the country. And so, Madam Speaker, let's examine the model. And I'm happy where the debate went. Let's look at the model proposed by the members opposite when they were in government. Madam Speaker, the IFC has been engaged. The IFC did some work. How would the airport have been built? How would they have built the airport? They would, get a cons they would get a PPP arrangement, but that PPP arrangement would have the concession a run in the airport. The difference with us, Madam Speaker, is we still want a PPP arrangement, but we are going to manage our airport. SLASPA has done a good job in managing the airport. And if anybody's salary should be 40,000 US, then let it be a St. Lucian who is employed by Slasper and not some foreign person who comes there and occupies the top job at the HIA airport. And go and check the record. You mentioned Bahamas. Go and find out what the airport development tax is in Bahamas. Yes, we went there. We saw what it was. And we saw how much it was going up incrementally. So when you want to come and say that, look here. Yes, I went to Bahamas previously when I was in government. Not this time. I'm not involved in the airport this time. So, so I'm just saying to you. <laughs> Madam Speaker. If almost $54 million had been collected in just the four years, can you imagine? And that is where, when we make mistakes as politicians, we must be big enough to come and say we made a mistake. The Labor Party made a major mistake. And the financial woes that we are in St. Lucia today they have contributed in a very meaningful way to this. Because the passenger counts have not reduced as a result or has not increased as a result of removing the airport tax or having the airport tax. That did not change the number of people. The announcement was made from January this year that the tax would be increased. And a percentage is already there increased numbers of arrivals in St. Lucia. And Madam Speaker, what they are not telling the people of St. Lucia, let's look at it. All other countries, we were cheaper than all the other countries when they were in government and the country's numbers were going up in terms of the, the airport tax was higher than us and they had more arrivals than we had in St. Lucia. Something is wrong. Something was definitely wrong, Madam Speaker. So they propose 30 years concession. And the person has an option to continue. So can you imagine the HIA airport? If we go into this arrangement, 
in 2018, and you add 30 years to that, in the year 2048, Madam Speaker, we will still not be in charge of our airport. And when 2048 comes, that person running the airport has the first right of refusal. So at what point? Huh? But you just presented that. But you just said the arrangement was for 30 years. Oh, they have a first right of refuse. <laughs> oh, it's so it's in the document, <laughs> Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I was just rephrasing. I was just rephrasing, but I understand that the basic thing is if you have the option to renew. The option to renew is the same as the first right of refusal. I never said so. I never said that. What did you say? I never said that. I just put it on the top of the I never said that. I never said that. I never said that. Madam Speaker. Subject. Huh? Subject to paragraph C, the concession contract shall not exceed 30 years from the due date of execution, with the option to extend the term of the agreement by the parties in the concession contract. Madam Speaker, you see, how can we trust what is said on this side of the house? It's in their document, you know. No. I said the agreement that you are presenting there, it was never presented. The details that you presented there, you alone have it, or maybe it might be at Huntley. That's what I said. It's not here. It was never presented. But you see, you want to play as if, Madam Speaker, the member for Castries is one to pretend as if I invented something. And you see, Madam Speaker, with a document. His document. He would have said he never said that. <laughs> you were again, Madam Speaker. So, so, Madam Speaker, when we go into these long term arrangements, these members must understand that they have implications. A good manager will tell you, Madam Speaker that these arrangements are very cumbersome. That's too long term. If we, if we did not have the capacity to introduce an airport development tax that could raise sufficient money to build the airport. Now, Madam Speaker, here's what they're afraid of. What they're afraid of is corruption. What they're afraid of is somebody going to make a bubble. So you don't trust the board of Slasper? You think that I could, the board of Slasper is made up of persons not appointed by the government. How many persons? How many persons from the government? Some persons. Okay? Madam Speaker, when I was minister for communications and works, which included port services, Slaspa was headed by the PS of finance, who is from the Ministry of Finance. The deputy chair of Slaspa was the PS of communications and work. And ask them for all the years they were there. Who was? Ask, yeah, yes, but get my point. Ask them who was my PS at that time. And who was the deputy chair of Slaspa? And ask them, ask them if I could influence that PS to make a decision that would benefit me personally on the board of Slaspa. I want them to answer that question, Madam Speaker. 
You see, Madam Speaker, it is easy to paint a picture of people and to make people believe that you are what you are not. But I always say, Madam Speaker, I'm a simple man. What you see is what you get. I don't have nothing to pretend. I don't have nothing to hide. So did I make calls? I make calls to everybody I interact with in my government. Every investor who comes to St. Lucia and I engage with them, I have conversations with them. I don't send nobody and speak on my behalf. For them to say, it's not me that did this. You see, Madam Speaker, some people, some people find it convenient. And I know, Madam Speaker, truth, yes, <laughs> truth and honesty is not something that is loved and appreciated. Because when you straightforward, Madam Speaker, you always find yourself in problems. Because you say it the way that you see it. So when I see the presentation by the members, I have to believe, Madam Speaker, that there was a fixer somewhere. There was a fixer. There's no way any man in their right mind would give a concession for the airport where a man would make a billion dollars net profit in 30 years on Little St. Lucia. On Little St. Lucia. A billion dollars. Now, Madam Speaker, these figures are associated with Air travel remained growing. When we did our calculations, it was a 1% growth projected per year. For this year alone, I heard the members say we have 14% or how much for one month. So imagine, we project. So that's like covering 14 months in 14 years. Madam Speaker, I want the people of St. Lucia to understand that the decision being made by this United Workers' Party government is a decision that's going to benefit St. Lucia. It is not going to give a foreign entity to run our airport and to get the cream and to leave the crumbs for us. That is the difference. That is the difference in the two models. And at the end of the day, Whoever is chosen as the contractor, whether they be the, the concession at the same time, it is somebody with the capability and the capacity to build the effort. So we can agree to disagree on who becomes the contractor. But you go to the contract at a price. Now I can see why they're afraid, you know, Madam Speaker. And I don't blame them. Once beaten, twice shy. You know why they're afraid? Madam Speaker, they signed cost overruns on Rocha Mill before Rocha Mill started. Before the hotel was built, they signed an agreement to cover cost overruns. When the Southwest Coast Road was being built, a contract was issued under that government over there when they were in government, the members opposite, for 43 million, the project ended up costing over a hundred million dollars. Madam Speaker, NCA, up to now, as them were Henry Charles. Have the NCA report here, eh, Madam Speaker. Have the report done by the Commission of Inquiry. So much money unaccounted for. Radios for the police. Money was sent to the U.S. Up to now, the radios have come back. The money has come back. Yes. Nobody has accounted for that. That happened on the day. St. Jude, Madam Speaker. They spoke about St. Jude. A project, they said, a state-of-the-art hospital would end up costing $60 million. And they said would be opened in August of 2016. Final date. Everything is on stream. 118 million dollars later, Madam Speaker. Go and look at St. Jude. So of course you have to be afraid of building the airport. Of course you, you cannot trust yourself. 
because you have shown that you do not have the capacity and the capability to deliver on anything you promise. So, of course, if you started the airport at 400 million, it would end up at 800. So, no wonder, no wonder the investor was saying, I don't want $45 to work with you. I want 55, and the 55 is not enough. You think, they, you think it's on us alone, the investors doing their research? They must have done their research on y'all. And understand who they're dealing with. So, Madam Speaker, when these members come here, and they want to portray that they are managers, and we don't know what to do. Madam Speaker, this airport development deal is a simple document. The members have gone everywhere. They have tried to say they're investigating me, Madam Speaker. And I am so happy to be investigated. I would, I'll give them a trophy for investigating me. I'm going to present them a trophy because they solid my name and they are claiming my name, Madam Speaker. That is what is happening here. You see, when people talk about being blessed, I don't talk about being blessed. There are people who one day they are an atheist, tomorrow they are blessed. I don't know who blessing them. But I don't come and talk about blessings that way. Okay? I don't come and talk about blessings that way. So, Madam Speaker, how do concessionaires operate? They come to maximize profit. And one way of maximizing profit is to inflate operating costs. It's easy to do that, Madam Speaker. You can inflate the operating costs. How can you tell them they cannot pay their manager $20,000 or $40,000? They tell you, for the quality of person that I want, that is what it is. How can you tell them that they cannot introduce it? So we know these things. We have to cater for that. Did we, in the agreement that the member for Castries spoke about, I want to ask him, show me where there was a clause in the agreement that limits the cost of operation, that the cost of operation should be a percentage of the revenues collected, and that it cannot go beyond that. Because that's what good negotiators do, Madam Speaker. You set a cap that I know that you cannot go beyond a certain point. But when you do this thing, cat blush, when you leave it open, what is going to happen, Madam Speaker? So the position taken by the United Workers' Party government is to still go into a PBP arrangement, but for the construction of the airport, and to be able to use the airport development tax to pay. And you can calculate that. That's not... Sci that's not high science. You can calculate that. If the percentage for the load is 6%, spread over a 30-year period, which is the, the cost of the financing, you know what the airport is going to cost you at the end of the day, based on the final price. So you're going in with your eyes open. With the concession arrangement, you are going in blindfolded. Because you don't know what you are getting into. So, Madam Speaker, members opposite, you know what we are doing is the right thing. It is the right thing for St. Lucia. It is going to bring benefits to the people of St. Lucia. Madam Speaker, the airport alone would create 900 new jobs in Viewport. Without DSH, without the hotels, without anything, just the expansion of the airport would create 900 additional part-time and full-time jobs at the airport alone. Not the construction part, you know, when it is completed, Madam Speaker. So we know that we are in a position to make it happen, Madam Speaker. And I support this bill being presented by the Prime Minister, this motion, Madam Speaker, to allow the country to implement the next phase 
of the airport development tax that will be used by St. Lucia to finance its airport project and all the benefits will remain with the people of St. Lucia. I thank you. Madam Speaker, can I beg that we suspend the House um, for 40 minutes, half an hour, half, half an hour, until 5.30? Honorable members, the question is that the House be suspended for half an hour, that we take some tea break and resume to complete. As many as of that opinion say aye. aye. As many as of a contrary opinion say no. I think the eyes have it, the eyes have it. This house is suspended until 5.30.